And so he put me into this kind of like cave that just came up out of the sand, and it was like in the shape of a big, you know, like um, tiger's head. And we kind of like I went, I went down, and it was just like full of jewels. But he told me I wasn't allowed to touch anything. All I could do was go right to the end of the cave, and I had to find my way all the way down this cave. And at the end, there was supposed to be like some old paraffin, like oil lamp type thing. Um, and he told me I had to put it straight in my bag. I wasn't allowed to touch any of the jewels or anything. But as soon as I got out, he was going to make me very rich. Um, only that didn't happen. And uh, as I was trying to get out there, my little monkey that usually sits on my shoulder, a boo, he kind of grabbed some of the jewels, and that kind of caused the whole cave to collapse inwards. And then the flying carpet rescue man, it was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. But suffice to say, it ended up with me marrying the princess and then becoming the sultan in good time as well. So there we go. Wow. Fantastic. What a story. You, you really are the most interesting man, Jay. You've really just right? done it all. My, know. my life is just crazy, right? I don't think, uh, I just don't think people uh, understand how uh, insane your life actually is, Jay. I know, I know, it's crazy. And yeah, I still make it here every week to uh, uh, to, uh, to to do the show. <laughs> you, you really are quite a trooper. Uh, shout out to Chat11, saying uh, he subscribes at Tier 1 for nine months. Thank you so much. He says, Twitch baby, I hope you all are inside and staying safe. Uh, mm. Yes, I'm going to look around Stay my home. Room. I'm, I'm, I'm still in my room where I've spent, like, 99% of the last week. Um, it's, 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 it's pretty exciting. I actually like it, though. I, I'm okay with uh, spending time alone in my room. It's, 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 it's kind of therapeutic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I would kind of agree. I've managed to, um, to kind of relay out my office a little bit while I've been at home. Um, and instead of having a pile of boxes behind me, uh, one of the things on my mail call this week is I now have a lovely unit which allows me to store all my group buy stuff before it gets shipped out. Wow, Jay um, has a lovely really nice. unit. Very nice. Mm. Very nice. It's a really nice big two meter long unit. It's great. That's, that's a great unit, Jay. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my birthday present to myself. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, uh, Upas saying, do we plan those? Um, <laughs> no. So. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> if by planning you mean 30 seconds before we go live, do we agree yeah. on what we're going to go with? Or yeah. do we ask each other if we've got something to go live with? Then yes, we plan no. it absolutely. Jay, stop. You're ruining the ambiance. <laughs> all these stories are 100% true, as I'm sure you well all know. So mm. just don't even... Don't, uh, don't worry about it, guys. The, all this stuff actually happens. That's Jay's actual life. <laughs> Tectonic Plate 001 subbing at Tier 1 for 20 months in a row. Holy crap. Thank you so much, man. Very nice. mighty kind of you. Long time support there. Always loving to see that. I think and Chicken as well. as well. Yeah, I, I yeah. tried to go back and look. I, I, think, I'm, I think I'm catching up now. Uh, yeah, PMS and Chicken subbing at Tier 1 for 24 months. Holy crap. Thank so you so it. much, guys. And all he says is hi. I like that. <laughs> Simplicity at its finest. Uh, George, that's, that's all it needs. <laughs> George is asking if uh, you're using a new cam today, actually. No, it's just that when my new setup is across here, the camera angles change. So instead of the camera being here, it's now here. So yeah. that's all. It's as simple as that. Yep. Makes sense. Uh... Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people from the uh, the Mechanisk server here. A lot of people... Uh... A lot of yeah. people coming straight from there. It looks like Nebula saying greetings from Leandrin. Nice. Alvin Zord nice. says Leandrin is pointing a gun to our heads so we say hi. Yeah, he, he kind of did. He put in the what? Discord that he said that you, you, you must go watch Top Clack tonight. That was kind of the uh, the message that he posted. That's uh, that's quite something. Yep. Skad says hi from Mechanics Discord. Gerard says hi from Mechanics Discord. All right. We got lots of Mechanics mechanic people <laughs> in this, in this uh, show today. I like that. I like that. Uh, Long Schlong Boy, another one of my favorite Twitch usernames. <laughs> Something at Tier 1 uh, for five months, and he says, Damn, look at those two sexy pieces of Schmeet. <laughs> Schmeet. Schmeet. Love it. Schlong. That's a great word. Schmeet. I wonder, that was. That was uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Upas says uh, hi from Upas. <laughs> Hi from Upas, nice, nice. Jeshuf and Beard in the Sink, thank you very much for the bits as well, guys. 500 from Jeshuf and 100 from Beard in the Sink, we appreciate those bits. Thank you and so much. Uh, a, sub, a sub from Stash Builds as well, so uh, uh, Stash says hello months, and he's got four months, uh, hello boys, sorry, he's got four months of subs, sorry. Uh, yes, your package finally, Stash, is going to go on, I think it's Tuesdays when DHL have finally agreed they can collect from my house, so uh, don't worry about that, that's on its way to you soon. Awesome, awesome. It's Derek. 
gives us 500 bits and says, Happy B-Day, Jay. Is it, it's not your birthday, oh, is thanks. it? Yeah, right now it is, yeah, yeah. Is uh, it? For me it is. Yeah, oh, for you it, it is. 27th, right? 27th of March, yeah. So, so, so for me today, right now in the UK, uh, 1 a.m., it is my birthday, yeah. Totally do that. I completely do that. I'm... <laughs> yeah, that's I... why you sent me a gift and a birthday card, right? I, sh- I should be getting that in the morning when the post comes, right? Uh, so Jampot says, uh, what are you eating, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I just had a, a Snickers, and now I've got a little Mars bar as well. Just some fun-sized ones for a snack. Mars, nice. nice. <laughs> uh, as the Joe, subbing at tier one for 11 months. Has good evening, boys. Thank you so much for that. And good evening, good show. Ka- Clever Lion, donating 100 bits. Thank you so much for that as well. Heat loss subbing for 14 months. Very nice. Very nice. We're on the hype train, too. Oh, we're at level three already. Holy crap. Oh, wow. That didn't see the hype train. was running. Nice. Yeah, I noticed it earlier, but I didn't realize it went up so far, so fast. You guys are crazy. <laughs> we will be officially starting the show momentarily, guys, I promise. Just uh, making some last-minute checks here. Penguin Droppings converted converted from a Twitch Prime sub to a Tier 1 sub. Very nice. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, loads of people coming from uh, Mechanese Discord. Ross yeah, holy crap. As well. Yeah, it's, we don't usually have this many viewers like right before the show starts, so this is definitely quite U- something. Upa, Upa says, oh, it's because of the uh, Fjell and the Clipper. And it's like, hmm, is it? Is it, that what it could be. Doing? It could, could be. be. We'll talk about that uh, momentarily, of course, once we uh, go live. Mm. Teal Technic is subbing at Tier 1 as well for five months. Thank you very much. Yeah, Geo's... thank you for the birthday wishes as well, guys. Thank you, everyone. I think oh, Geo is baby. referencing uh, your candy bar. He says, fun size, like Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that candy bar larger than you, Jay? <laughs> I wish it was. I wish it was. <laughs> Feels good, man. Uh oh. Stash says, shame on me. <laughs> I guess I have to send Jay a present. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I think. I think you, the, uh... the apocalypse saying them. I go on. Oh, man. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Eating a caramel chocolate bar before talking on a podcast. Excellent decision there. Don't this worry, is... I've got coffee to wash it down. It's this fun. is classic Top Clack, guys. Vintage Top Clack. <laughs> you eat on stream, it's no big deal. Everybody eats. Come on. Everybody eats. Enigma's asking if it's your birthday gift to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Sure, if that's what you want to think. Fantastic. Alright. Let me know when you're not eating, then I'll, uh, I'll officially start the show. <laughs> I'm just about done. Don't worry. Sorry, I just needed a snack. Like, it's, no, it's I, I get it. And, I, mean, sh- yeah, I got, I just need, I got I food next to me, to too. Home, but... you just, nobody ever sees it, because I, <laughs> I don't usually eat on stream. <clears throat> yeah, I just needed a snack to keep me going for the stream. And that's one pot of coffee done, and now I've got the second pot of coffee. Oh man, I forgot to actually fill up my water before the stream. So I'm going to do that right now, before we officially go live. <clears throat> I'll be right back, yeah. boys and girls. Um, Enigma says, is it my birthday gift to myself? It's uh, it's not, but in mail call, which we're going to do in a few seconds, uh, I do have a couple of gifts to myself, other than the unit that's behind me. You might be able to just see one of them to this side, which is the uh, uh, the Lego Batmobile. So I'm going to be actually build that on the stream at some point soon as well. So that's the 1989 uh, Batmobile. Uh, so the Michael Keaton film, the best Batman film. Don't shoot me. Don't at me. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be building that on stream at some point soon uh, in between build streams. So that'll happen at some point. But yeah. Uh, <coughs> Eredius subbing at tier one for 15 months. Thank you so much. And a Mountain Blocks donates 222 bits. Says, hey, friends. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. Nice pants, Brian. Oh yeah, I guess he's. I'm just wearing sweatpants. <laughs> we're all quarantined. <laughs> let's let's be honest. Let's let's remember and realize here that we're probably all wearing yeah. either sweatpants or no pants. Uh, can confirm sweatpants here as well. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do this show without pants so often, and like it, it was it was always it was always like I never like showed anything, of course, but like it was always kind of a joke with chat, like whether or not I'd be wearing pants because legitimately a lot of the times I would not be. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Ashley says uh, he's in shorts. Well, mine are technically sweat shorts, if that makes sense. They're, they're kind of like sweatpants, but short versions, so... <laughs> I can kind of snap you on that, so there we go. Awesome. <laughs> <coughs> should, oh, we, uh, should we do the pre-show mail call before we jump into the main show, Brian? Do you want to do that? Oh, we quickly? didn't do that yet. Oh, that's going to be, well, kind of quick anyways. All right, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, right. So, the first thing is I bought myself uh, another birthday present. 
Uh, I bought myself a Switch, a Nintendo Switch, but I got the Animal Crossing version, which is really cute, really cool. Uh, so non-keyboard related, but hey, I, I couldn't not buy that. Um, and it has some great details. I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera, but it, the, the back it, of the Switch itself has got some fantastic detail on it. It shows up uh, really well, surprisingly. Um, so yeah, so that's really cool. Uh, I also, uh, we, if you watched our stream with all of our guests last uh, Saturday, you would have seen that I showed this up as well. Uh, I can't get into the box right now, but, uh, oh yeah, I can. I got a Selvan cap in the post as well, so his new rose gold anodized uh, pea cap in its 3D printed case. Um, I also got myself uh, a Triumph Adler set. So I can't hold this up because it's one of the really old style GMK trays. And this is the original Triumph Adler run from uh, Drop. So wow. GMK set that ran in 2015. Uh, they had some extras on their site last week, so I picked one of those up. Um, so yeah, and then the final thing that I got as well, which I'm really excited for, and is probably going to go to the front of my build queue, is the Polaris. Oh, so, that's exciting. Yeah. So um, anyone want a sneak peek of the green color? Because that's what I got here. Yes. Um, I can do a really, really quick sneak peek. Queen, because it is absolutely beautiful. By sneak peek, do you mean you're? It's already on the way, the way to me. Is it already in the mail? Uh, you can believe that if you'd like. Uh, so this is through the packaging. Look how nice that green is. I don't know how well this is going to cook. Oh my God. The way you uh, the way you ruin my camera settings, Brian, is, is always get good. out of but, here. Um, Jay, anyway, you look it, fine. It'll be, on, it'll be on stream on Sunday. Will that? So uh, I'm really really excited to build that. Uh, yeah, cool. And that's it. That was my mail call. Zerp says, says that's a very British green. It is very, very close to British racing green. It's not quite dark enough for it, but it's very close. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, George making a, a backwards Polaris joke because the camera <coughs> was mirrored, I think. So it showed up yeah. backwards on the, the camera. That, that's, a, that's a nice joke. I like that. Yeah. I actually have to remember to flip it around the other way for when um, for when I do my build stream. So that if I lift, if if you see me moving my uh, my my left hand when I'm soldering, my left hand is the one that actually comes up uh, when when you see when you're looking. I have to remember to flip it around so it's that way around. Um, but yeah. All right. Well, oh, yeah. Um, so Enigma just said. So, so one other thing that I did get, which is just sad. So really, really quickly, I just want to shout out to Way, one of our sponsors, because uh, and this might be from uh, AIO3 and Kevin Plus as well. Uh, but inside the Polaris, I actually got like a little card as well, which was really sweet. Um, so it says uh, on the front, it says uh, especially for you, and then inside there's a handwritten bit of text uh, which says, "Hi Jay, wish you all the best. Wish all the best wishes for you uh, from all of us at KBD fans," which was really sweet as well. That's that's amazing. Really nice, really nice little touch. That is certainly a nice touch. All right, and with that said, we're uh, we're running a little behind here, so I apologize for that, guys. But we're gonna we're gonna run the intro and we're gonna start the show officially. We're gonna talk about keyboards. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's episode of Talk Clack. I am your host, Quakums, as usual, joined by my lovely co-host, Jay, and we're going to talk a little bit about keyboards today, believe it or not. We do have Ooh. a, uh, we have a reasonable news doc. It's not too, uh, not too big, not too small, uh, you know, just like Jay. So, uh, we're just, gonna... just the right size, as some might say, the Goldilocks size, maybe. Whatever makes you sleep better at night, Jay. Uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> uh, despite how you sleep at night, how are you doing today, sir? I'm I'm good. I'm good. I've got plenty of coffee. I've had my snack. I'm feeling good. Pumped for the show. Uh, big day ahead of me today after I've had another nap. But yeah, it's good. Another nap. You don't get enough naps. Yeah, well, I, 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 had, I have like a three hour nap before the show and then I have like a three hour nap afterwards. So on a Thursday night, I only really get about six hours sleep, which is, is pretty okay, actually. It's pretty average for me, but splitting it into two chunks isn't always the best way of doing it. Yeah, it could it could be worse. So we do have a uh, a couple quick announcements to make before we roll into our news doc. And of course, if you're new to the stream and you've never seen this before and you have no idea what's going on, um, it's pretty simple. I know a lot of you people are uh, here from the Mechanist Discord, and I would love to welcome you all. Special shout out and thanks to all of you who watching Landrin over at Mechanist, fantastic guy. Uh, so fantastic, in fact, he is actually our newest sponsor here on Top Clack. So a lot of you uh, with the more astute eyes might have uh, already seen him rotating in our sponsor banner. That's in the bottom middle of your screen right now. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Mechanisk, our newest sponsor. We, uh, we've known them for a while. We've uh, loved them for a while. I really enjoy the products that Mechanisk puts out. And uh, I actually got to meet up with um, Leandrin 
uh, over last summer, I believe it was uh, in July, just before, it was either before or after the uh, the Seattle summer meetup. But, just um, after, because I missed him by like a week. Yeah, yeah it was uh, it was really unfortunate. I got a, I got a chance to hang out with him a little bit there, and he was incredibly nice and it's so wholesome. And I just cannot speak highly enough about the guy. So very much support him as a person, and uh, I love a lot of the products that he does because he does a lot of different things that nobody else really tackles, and I really really appreciate that. So. Big shout outs to all of them, and uh, yeah, of course, welcome them as our newest sponsor, everyone. Be nice yeah, to McCask. <laughs> it's nice to welcome him finally into the fold. I know it's something we've been talking about for a little while, so it's uh, it's nice to have him finally on the on the sponsor's roster. So yeah, welcome, Leandro. Congratulations. Yeah. Did Quake give him a hug? I'm pretty sure we hugged. I'm almost positive we hugged at least once. There I'm was kind a of... picture of you, with, of you with your arm around him, I think. I'm pretty sure that yeah, was Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's what he looks like. If you saw that picture on Instagram, I'm pretty sure I posted that a while back. But, uh, yeah, good, good stuff. And, of course, we are going to be talking about the Fiel and the Clipe a little bit today as well. I know I pronounced that wrong because I'm a, I'm a, silly, Amer- I'm a, I'm a silly American and I can't <laughs> enunciate in a dif- different language, apparently. Um, yeah. Regardless, it's going to be a, a great time. Um, another quick announcement before we roll into the news doc. Uh, behind the keyboards, I know it's been postponed for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks because of one reason or another. Most of them not my fault, let's be real here. But uh, tomorrow, wow. tomorrow, I do have a guest fully scheduled, fully confirmed, and fully worked out. So, barring emergency circumstances, tomorrow there will be the very first episode of Behind the Keyboard. So, keep that any, in mind. Any, any teasers gonna... for who your guest is? Um... I, Any hints? I'm trying to think of a, a a quick hint that wouldn't completely give it away, because I don't I don't really want to te- I don't really want to tease it too much, because I I like the idea of it being kind of a secret as well until uh, at least that day. Okay. Okay. Um, but you guys you guys will find out tomorrow unless something goes wrong, and if something goes wrong, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> 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 but anyways, yes. Hopefully no hiccups uh, this time. So look forward to that. Is it Jay? It's not Jay. Um, no, he, he, he keeps saying it's not it's not allowed to be me, which I find really unfair. No, it, it can be um, you, but like as a first guest, just... come on, it needs to be someone like <laughs> big and popular and good looking. You know, I can't uh, I can't get you in right away. Jay. <laughs> wow, poggers, big poggers. <laughs> Did you expect where's the, where, something where's else? Where's the quit button? Where's the quit button? You know exactly where the quit button is, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> A monster? Yes, I am indeed a monster. But it's okay. It's all in jest. This, Jay and I actually this, love each other, probably, maybe-ish. This is what I have to put up with, chat. This this is literally what my life is like with Brian in it. Uh, just constant insults. On my birthday, no less. <laughs> I, that's what I have to give you extra shit, isn't it? I have to be more mean to you than usual on your birthday. That, that only makes sense to me. You should be nice to me. Nice. Is that what people do? I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll do whatever chat wants me to do. How about that? If chat wants me to be nice, I'll be nice. If chat wants me to be mean, I'm going to be mean. <laughs> Regardless, let's uh, let's hop right into our news doc, if you're uh, ready for it, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's see what we got here. First up, just like we were talking about a second ago, Mechanisk, our new sponsor, has a new round of both Fiel and Clippa, <coughs> and there are some interesting changes going on this one as well. So let's uh, let's start out with the uh, the Fiel. It is worth noting that both mm-hmm. of these are tray mount cases, which uh, you know some people do tend to shy away for because they don't think they are quite as premium as a lot of other offerings, and to some extent that may be true. But I think there are other benefits that you have to consider here: uh, price and uh, availability, accessibility being very very high up on that list so. for sure yeah um but these boards have been around a while and many of you may have uh, have heard some of the most famous typing tests in existence on uh, uh on on youtube that include a couple of these boards so uh, it's well worth searching out some of those typing tests as well if you haven't seen or heard of these before uh, so please do feel free to have a have a bit of a shift around youtube for those uh, typing tests Fantastic. I forgot I had to enter a password, so I'm sorry about that, guys. Nobody saw it, thankfully. So. <laughs> Should be alright. I thought, I thought you'd already done it. <laughs> I, for, I forgot before the show, he's like, hey, there's going to be a password. What do you want it to be? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. 
I thought you were going to say the password then. I thought you were... No, 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 no. Oh, I want it to be this. Yes. I, want it, I want it to be J. You know? um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. People clearly watched me type out more than three letters. But uh, regardless... Let's start up uh, with the Fiel here. We're not going to talk all about uh, the Fiel and the Clippa just because they have been around for a while. These are uh, these are fairly similar versions to some of the rounds we've seen in the past, but there are some changes as well. So as you can yes. see here, um, the Fiel now actually has removable posts in the middle, the center one and the one to the bottom right of the space bar. It's been kind of more of a common practice lately in tray mount cases to either remove these posts entirely or give you some kind of um, you know alternative like the, uh, the Fiel and uh, the new Klippe as well. So they give you removal posts. So if you want to use them, you can. If you don't want to use them, you can just, you know, get them out of your sight. And I think it's nice to have that option Absolutely. as well. It is, yeah. We've seen it on a couple of boards in the past where they've uh, actually issued those two posts. So the first was the Luxury T60, and then we had the Type X, which I built on stream a couple of weeks ago. And I think you've got your Type X build stream coming up soon as well, haven't you? Probably? I do, yeah. I actually have the Type X uh, right down here to the right by my uh, my, my foot, and that is going to be one of my next upcoming build streams. I don't know what I'm going to put in it yet. I don't even know if I'm going to use a plate, to be honest with you. I might just use the WT60D PCB and see what kind of flex... I can get in a tray mount without a plate and that particular PCB. So we'll have to yeah. wait and see. That's coming up. I know you actually, you just recently did yours, right, for the Type X? Mm. Yeah, I did it quite recently. Um, yeah, I did it with uh, the, the POM keycaps that we got from Escape Keyboards a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was really impressed with it. Um, yeah, I like the fact that it had the dampening on the post. It's a really good board. Yeah, uh, it's been, uh, it was going to be my office board, but now I'm not going to the office anymore because we're all staying at home. Look, um, you still have yeah. an office, technically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this this is kind of like my workspace, yeah. <laughs> okay, so anyways, back to the Fiel here. So price is going to be, I believe, uh, if you pass on the plate and the PCB, yes. So the base price for the Fiel, round five, 290 Yes, that's not a, a completely cheap keyboard case. It is 290 just for the case, and yes, that does seem expensive. But you got to also realize that the Fiel is arguably the best tray mount in existence it's definitely probably definitely the most iconic i would say uh, courtesy of nathan kim and that typing test that uh, just went completely viral on youtube and everyone loved it and so many people are trying to replicate it even pro gamers or whatever are trying to get the exact same uh, feel and sound it seems so the fiel yeah. oh, the youtube is so available. popular so popular and it is a really big heavy dense metal case and this one does have a pretty nice feature set, too, with those removable posts. I love seeing that. And the weight system has always been really nice in this as well. Um, going yeah. off of that, the case colors here, I think, are, are pretty much uh, a home run. I'm really glad that they're bringing back the round one gray because that was insanely it's a really good. nice color. It's such a good color. And now we're finally seeing the Ultramarine be available as well. Really, really happy yeah. to see that one, too. I love the look of this color, and I haven't seen it out in the wild yet, so... That's uh, so my, my Type X was Ultramarine. Uh, what? It is behind me. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. sent me the I, silver I, one instead of the Ultramarine one? Oh my god. Jay. I gave you the choice. I said, do you want the blue-green one or do you want the grey one? And you no, the gray one. you did not say Ultramarine. You said Maybe blue. I didn't say Ultramarine. Those but... are very different things. I. Well, that's what he said on the box. It had the blue thing ticked on the box anyway. You anyway, and I are having yeah. words later is what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, that aside, it also comes in uh, e-white, silver, black, and red. So you get a, a pretty decent uh, array there, but I, I, I really do think the gray and the ultramarine are probably the two best colors out of that uh, by is, far. Is the e-white e an additional cost on this one? I couldn't see when you... Uh, yeah, 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 sorry. So, so that yeah. the e-white, e which is understandable, is $20 more. E-white, almost uh, e-coding in general, almost always costs more than uh, than anodization, for example. So, good stuff there. And you can, of course, like I was showing here, you can add plates and PCB as well. You have your choice of plate, as well as uh, a WT60D PCB option, which I actually like quite a bit. I think it's one of the better options on the market, considering, uh, let's see, it was designed by Wilba. It's USB-C via QMK support. It's got the flex slot cuts. Uh, and, yeah. it's, and it's ISO freaking and gorgeous. And, yeah. Yeah, and it supports ISO. So really, really good option there. You can uh, you can askew that for about sixty dollars, I think, which I think is the standalone cost of the PCB to begin with. But uh, it gets mm -hmm. a little bit more interesting. So let's move over to the uh, the clipe the clipa. Sorry, I know I pronounce that wrong every time. Clipa. I apologize. Yeah, clipa. <laughs> uh, one of these days I'll get it, guys. But uh, this round of clipa is actually pretty interesting, more interesting than the fiel, if you ask me. So starting off right away, you'll notice that there's actually going to be a polycarbonate version, which is the first mm. time we've seen uh, the the clipa in polycarbonate. 
And of course, it does have the removal post as well. So that should be going along um, with the field when this goes live. And it's actually $10 cheaper than the other Clippa kits as well. So that's kind of cool as well. So you can get the normal one, the non-polycarbonate version, the aluminum version for $200 in a kit. And that'll include, uh, obviously, your color choice, your choice of plate, whether you want Anzi or ISO, whether you want aluminum, polycarbonate, or brass, um, or no plate. And uh, the, the WT60D PCB as well. So you can drop those, and it'll only cost you $120. Um, you can add the PCB for 60 bucks, and you can add a plate for, uh, which is like $19. You can add a brass plate for $19. It's pretty good pricing. When was the last time you could add a brass plate to anything for $19? That's crazy. Not for $19, no. Can't yeah. remember. And, uh, yeah, brass, the same price as the aluminum and the polycarbonate, so that's pretty interesting as well. But, yeah, you can get a $200 kit. Clip a nice premium tray bound case with removable posts. Color of your choice, plate option of your choice, and arguably one of the best PCBs on the market right now for 199 bucks. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Cypher Sage says in chat that my brush plate from Laser Boost was 55 GBP. I think a lot of the things you've got to remember, guys, is that um, when you're buying things for a creep buy, you're buying in bulk, you do get you know uh, that economy of scale, and it does drop the price per unit down. So there's a lot of benefits to running a group buy because it allows us to do those kind of things. So a one-off plate from Laser Boost is probably going to be a little bit more expensive, but just worth bearing that in mind. Yeah. I really, really do like this kind of option. We were talking about it in the Discord um, the other day as well when this, the, the thread first went live. It's like, what, what, is, what are the re recommended kits or keyboards for people that only have $200 or less or like, you know, $300 or less and they just <coughs> want one keyboard? And like, what, what do you recommend them? Because this is starting to look pretty attractive as that option. Yeah, it, it's it's well known. It comes from a, a, a respected manufacturer and maker. You know, it, it's it's been around on the market for a while. It's always done well. It's always sold fast. Uh, you know, people use theirs regularly. I have like two clippers and the T60 as well, and I've had a fiel in the past. So you know, these are these are all really good boards, and people have owned them for you know a, a long time. So um, yeah, I think this this has to be up there. You know, this this is up there, especially the clipper is up there in line with you know KBD fans kind of pricing now and the, the the kits that they can offer but you get arguably a slight better quality as well because it's you know something that's been through that revision process multiple times um so yeah absolutely it's got to be up there yeah and uh, though i i think i i don't think i ever made a video about it or did it on stream i did actually when i first got my clip uh um, I, I directly compared it to the tofu um because obviously the tofu is 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 noticeably cheaper on kbd fans and it is a similar looking case. It does look very similar. It's size very similar. Design is basically the same. It's a tray. It's a rectangle. It's got a little bit of angle. That's it. Yeah. So the as, as the Jake Webb says, it's, uh, they're all poker upgrades, basically. Yeah, yeah, basically. But I mean, when the tofu launched, it, it, it launched at a, a pretty reasonable price. I think eighty dollars was the group buy price, and it did look yeah. pretty much like a Clippa. Um, but when you actually put them side by side, the difference is pretty staggering, both in sound and in weight. The Clippa is like literally three times the weight of a Tofu, and that density really does translate to uh, the overall sound and what you wind up hearing because of the resonance too. Because I gotta be honest, as, as cool a value as the Tofu is, and it is a good value, um, it sounds like shit. And, you know, it's super light, which is not always what you want with a bulky aluminum case. You want some, some density there. You want some heaviness. You want some heftiness. And you want, you know, a good, clean, deep sound. And that's something that you can get with the Clippa, but you don't really get with the Tofu. So I'm glad to see the Clippa actually being a lot more competitive with the Tofu nowadays because it wasn't always like that. The Clippa actually used to be a little bit more expensive than maybe it needed to be. Um, but nowadays, I think that this is a much, much, much better place to clip, uh, and I think that this kit is just really, really hard not to recommend new people in the hobby if they're looking for yeah. a 50%. It, it's certainly chunkier than the uh, the tofu. I'm not I'm not sure your claim that it's three times as heavy is, is right, but it is a lot uh, heavier. It, it, is, it is chunkier. That, that figure is probably not as far off as you might think. I think mine is... Yes. What does the clip away? Hold on, does anyone have a tofu on hand? Because I'm pretty uh, sure... Tofu is about 650, 700 grams, I think. Probably. Because I'm pretty sure this is... This was, this was a, this got to be at least 2 kilograms for the, the full build. Oh, not 2 kilograms, sorry. No. Not 2 kilograms, sorry. Not not 2 kilograms, but like... Oh, uh, Leandrin's in chat. It says Clipper is around uh, 1,100 grams on its own. So he's talking around 1,350 grams. So 1 1.3 kilograms on its own. 
uh, fully built with caps and plate and PCB and switches and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Frothy KK, thank you for the sub Twitch or uh, tier one sub. Appreciate that, my friend. Cool. All right. Thank so, you, Frothy. oh wow, Appreciate I didn't even realize there's a <laughs> there's actually an embedded clip from us from uh, last May. Oh gosh. We, I, I don't even know what this clip is. I'm assuming we're we must be talking about the clip or something at that point. That's uh, that, that's pre our rebrand, pre our refresh. Yeah, that's 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 a slightly slightly some, more classic top click. Some vintage. <laughs> I'm not even going to play that clip because I'm too embarrassed to know what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's interesting to see how the boards on my wall have changed since then as well. That's why I like. Oh about. man, that's that's kind of funny. Yeah, look at my. I have like no beard in this either. That's that's kind of funny. Anyway, so if you noticed at the top of the mechanic site, there is a countdown. So these actually are not live yet, but they will be in uh, just over 33 minutes. So that's at um, 7 p.m. Pacific time. So that's mm. when these go live. So if you want to make sure you get one of these uh, Clippa kits or Fiel kits or, uh, you know, just the cases or whatnot, this is a good time the, to do it. The only other thing you didn't mention is there is now a PC Clipper as well. I did mention that, actually. But we can talk oh, about it more you? if you'd like, because I'm. this is actually the most interesting thing to me in the entire run. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about this a little bit. Because... What, what are your thoughts on, on, on this particular one, then? Well, I mean, well, A, it's polycarbonate. Polycarbonate's very trendy. A lot of people like that, so... I'm interested in trying it, but it's also ten dollars cheaper. And I mean, if I can save five, ten, twenty bucks here and there, I usually do it. <laughs> yeah, I like value, man. I I, especially when I'm, you know, jobless. So <laughs> it's it's nice to it's nice to be able to save extra money sometimes, right? Yeah, I, I get that. I get that. I'm I'm really interested in this purely because I've got other clippers from previous rounds. I definitely want to try and pick up a polycarbonate one. Uh, so if you see me struggling and going quiet in chat in thirty two minutes, guys, then. Uh, <laughs> You, you know why. You know why. <laughs> I actually forgot to look, but I don't think these are limited, right? Uh, I don't believe so. I think there's... Um, uh, I think there's some of the the, the, the limited editions limited, obviously, but I can't remember if that's in well, units or time yeah. available. I think, there's only, I think there's only 10 of it, if I remember rightly. Um, you have more information with access to the yeah. website than I do. Yeah, that's... that's, that's oh, yeah, you can't, even, you can't even see it. I totally forgot about that. Um... Yep. <laughs> I didn't even give you the password. I'm so I'm such a good co-host, man. What's what's the password, Brian? I'll, I'll enter it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Too funny. Alright, where there's where's the special edition? I know there was a special edition Is it just the Fiel or is there a clip I one too? Yeah, it's just the Fiel. It's just the Fiel. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know I looked at it. Oh that's right, it's Rose Gold. That's right. Yes. Oh also yeah. shout out to Leandrin for uh for, for labeling this small view, by the way. <laughs> this is this is a really nice cute touch. I like that. Um, all right, so the rose gold version um, is this is this inspired by Olivia at all? <laughs> is that Who still knows? like is that still a thing that she does where she talks to like every vendor and group I runner and tries to get a special edition rose gold of every single board in existence? Uh, the, the last time she approached me for it was when we did the original Jo ones, and uh, so that was probably twelve months ago now. So. Uh... I, I, I don't know if she still does it. I think she did it for Petrov when we did the Allisons for Petrov, actually, as well. So I think that's the only reason why there's Roll Calls Allisons out there. So, Leandro, you gotta, is, is this because of Olivia? Or did you actually want to do this? I, I, I My own personal curiosity is just so peaked right now, and I, I feel like I have to know. It is worth noting, limited to 10 units, just like uh, Jay mentioned there on that rose gold version. But yeah, I don't think there's a, a unit cap on the normal Fiel or Clippa, right? Uh, no, not on the normal one, no. Okay, cool. Very nice. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's just the Andron. It's not got a oh, okay. stamp on it. Right? <laughs> uh, someone else asking if she got a uh, an FE in the JO2. Uh, Olivia didn't know. She didn't apply for the JO2. Um, I'm not sure if 60% is just not her thing or if she didn't see it. I don't know. But she, she didn't actually apply for it. Yeah. 500 Could... people. Olivia wasn't one, which is unusual for a group buy. That's, that's very unusual. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder, do you think Olivia is going to buy one of these limited edition ones? It wouldn't surprise me if she did. It wouldn't surprise me. I don't know why I'm so curious about this. We should, we should, we should move on. But uh, anyway, so guys, if you want to get one of these, make sure uh, you get one of these in about 30 minutes and three seconds. I think. Uh, well, actually, it's probably less now since there's a delay on stream. But half an hour it does open up. Seven o'clock Pacific time. You can grab one of those. Three a.m. EU, two a.m. UK time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to something that we know so much less about. Um, unfortunately, this is the interest check for the cyber board by Co Comolagma. Comolagma? Well, it, well, well, it, well, it isn't. It, well, it, fair it, enough. It, it isn't. Fair enough. Yeah. You're right. 
You're right. So, so um, go, go on. You, you you tell the story of this one. I, I I wait. Who actually designed this? Was it in here somewhere? <clears throat> uh, no. <laughs> it just says it just says someone else designed it, right? That's all this is. Yeah. So 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 basically, what this is is this is uh, an intro check for a board um, that this guy uh, I'm just going to call him Karma uh, has found, and he found this on a keyboard bulletin site in China. Uh, and the inspiration apparently comes from the Cybertruck of Tesla. So if you haven't seen the Tesla Cybertruck, do go Google it. It's very or interesting or and don't. divisive. <laughs> um, I'm not going to lie, I kind of want one. <laughs> um, uh, really? But this, uh, just just for the memes, I would never buy one, but just for the memes. Uh, but this, the Cyberboard is apparently in um, research and development phase, so i.e. they're prototyping it right now. Um, and it has uh, some unique stylist, stylistic features, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, it's worth while pointing out that Como isn't the runner of this group by in China. He's just found it, and he's sharing it with people over here. So whether this makes it over to our shores or not, or whether he's wanting to be a proxy or vendor or however that's going to work, I'm not sure. But it isn't his, his board. It isn't his design. So it's kind of interesting that the, uh, the infrastructure has been set up from that perspective anyway. Uh, but Brian, do you want to uh, talk us through the board and its unique, interesting features and quirks? Yeah, yeah. I, or at least I'd very much like to. <coughs> but sadly, this interest check, as you can see, has no information. It's just a bunch of renders, effectively. And uh, as you can see here through the renders, there's basically kind of a, a screen set up over here on the back that kind of points away from you, actually. So as not to blind you, I would assume. Because otherwise, this could probably get uh, a little a little ravey, I would imagine. <clears throat> and that would be quite interesting. But uh, I, I, it seems a little excessive. The best part about this interest check thread, though, is down, if we scroll down to the comments... Uh, towards towards the end, if I recall, they actually have a physical prototype of this. Yeah. How, now, this how prototype, is this? Look at look at this. This, this prototype is really really interesting for a couple of reasons. Firstly, uh, look how deep it is at that tallest point. That must have some angle to it. Uh, I have no idea what it is, but it looks like it's an eleven, maybe even a twelve degree angle inside this board. So very very close to the duck kind of levels of angle that you get. Uh, secondly, that rear LED screen, I kind of like how they've done this, actually. It's quite a clever implementation. So underneath that grill that you see there, there'll be a circuit board with all of the LEDs on. But that's going to have some huge power draw for that many LEDs, let's be honest. Uh, but kind of having them all in all these segmented areas is kind of clever uh, so that you don't get crossover and light bleed from one color to the other. And it allows you to address them individually and have them as individual colors that are distinct and separate, which is kind of clever. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there's going to be like some sort of fascia that fits over to over the top of that, like some frosted acrylic or something as well. But what's really interesting is the inside of the case. Now, you can't see a ton of detail here. Uh, you can see what's a slot for what I suspect is going to be a weight in the middle. It's kind of like a square shape with a round hole that goes through to the cardboard. And then there's kind of like some other areas uh, underneath uh, the front, which kind of sit underneath your, uh, uh, your, your space bar to the left and the right and your, your um, control keys and all that. And it looks like that might be spaces cut out for batteries or something else. So this may even have Bluetooth support. Um, maybe I don't know. It, it's just really interesting that there's all of this work gone into the bottom case with no detail on what it provides, what it's there for, or what the other features of the board are. Um, it, it's probably also worthwhile saying I didn't like it when I saw the renders at the top of the page. I really dislike the board, but the more I look at the prototype, the more interested and intrigued I am as well. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's weird, isn't it? It's just I weird. Mean... <clears throat> it's weird, but not necessarily in a bad way. I mean, I'm always a fan of innovation. And I'm always a fan of just kind of breaking the mold and doing something out of the ordinary because we, we do already have a lot of people doing effectively the same thing. And arguably a lot of them do it quite well, but it's kind of nice to see something like a keyboard where you take a look at it and you go, what, what is this? Why is this? Who thought of this? And what is it supposed to accomplish? Like, <laughs> those are the kind of questions I like to ask myself when I look at a keyboard. And yeah, like I just don't know. Like when you look at this, and like who who is this for? It makes no sense, but it could be really cool, and we'll have no idea. Yeah, it, I mean, it's like a crossover between electronic billboards and keyboards, right? That's that's kind of the mid ground. Uh, Harry Potter also reached out on something and says uh, gasket question mark. I had suspected the same because you can see on the inside of the front case is kind of like um, uh, rectangles cut out, so it does look like it might be gasket mount, very similar to something like the uh, the, the number two or uh, anything else with tabbed gaskets. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, again, we don't have any details on the plate. It could still be top mount because there's what looks like potential screw brackets in there as well. When you look on closer detail, we we just don't know. Yep, they, get, they give us, the yeah, they, they, we have no info on this, unfortunately. 
We just know that there is a physical prototype and we have all these renders. And it's not done by this person, Como. So Gradient there's... Switch says uh, it's it's a low res MacBook Pro touch bar without the touch functionality. <laughs> You're probably not wrong. You're probably not wrong. It's probably not gonna cost a whole lot less either. I mean, look at the complexity of that proto. There's a lot going on there. Like you why did it there is, yeah. Um so yeah, it's 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 kind of scary. Is this? Do you remember, what was that one board that we checked out not that long ago that had like some insane like mounting? Oh, the Fat Boy. Yeah. Is it the Fat Boy? Yeah. Yeah. It just seemed like really unnecessary and overly designed and probably insanely expensive, but also kind of cool at the same time. I feel yeah. like this oh, is a similar effect. Um, yeah, I think I think so too. Interestingly, Harry ha ha Haddy uh, has just posted the uh, another image which has got uh, the PCB slotted in the back underneath where that grill would be, which has got all of the individual addressable LEDs on it. That's some wow. PCB. That's that. I can't imagine what the power draw for that is, but it's um, impressive because pretty... this already looks built too. It already has caps on it. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like there is uh, at least more than one prototype out there because that's purple. The other yeah. one was uh, grey. So yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. This might actually be dope. I honestly can't tell. I completely agree. It's either going to be terrible or great, and I really don't know. Um, I imagine it's going to be really bright, so if you're the type of person that likes a dimly lit kind of work area, uh, this might not be the board for you. True. I mean, I assume you'd be able to quite easily turn it off, but at the same time, if you're not buying this product for that feature, why are you buying this product? Yeah. Yeah. There's um, it, it's an interesting feature though, isn't it? it it's something. It's something. It's, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what words I'd want to choose to talk about this. So I don't. I don't really. I don't really have much more to say. It looks interesting, but we have so little information on it. There's you can't really force an opinion other than it's kind of a strange seventy five percent layout, and it's got a lot of lights on the back, and they really, really went hard on these angles. Yeah, Mountain Blocks calls out that this is the 2020 equivalent of crevice lighting. So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, I, I needed that. Do, do, do you know what would set this game, uh, sorry, set this board above all others? Is if you could play like a little side scrolling shooter on this, uh, on, on the LEDs at the back. I ass um, assume you probably could with like QMK programmability. I'm not right? sure if oh, you. you mm, Don't people it, play, it all depends on how. Don't people play like Snake? snake? On their keyboards <laughs> with LEDs. Now yeah, some people do with the LEDs. Yeah, uh, this is significantly more LEDs. Be interesting. You can you can probably do something. You can probably do something. Sure. Yeah, I I'm curious how they are powering those LEDs. To be entirely honest with you, because it would be kind of a bummer if this was just like a two USB cord cable uh, sort of situation. Well, yeah, I don't think it is. It looks like it's just one USB, but uh, that means that they must be limiting the actual brightness of them or something like that to reduce the power needed. Because uh, it looks like it's just one USB-C port. So. Yeah, that's all I saw as well. So we don't know. Maybe maybe you do have to have some kind of like battery in here or something in some way. I'd, I'd be interested to see uh, Hadi's picture with it turned on as well, just to see what it actually looks like in real life. That that that's what I need to see. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know if if, if hey if they, if they want an EU vendor for to sell like. Two of these. Then, Two of these hey, in, the, in the EU, <laughs> in the UK. <laughs> Let me at it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Sure, great. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love the the unit of two as well. It's it's fantastic. You can't commit too hard to something you know nothing about. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, since we don't really have much information more on this, let's move on to something we do have quite a bit of information on. This is the interest check for the Iron 180 by Smith & Rune. So if you're unfamiliar with um, the Iron series, we saw it uh, last summer, I believe, uh, with the Iron 165, yeah. and that was a very popular 65% group buy. Uh, the interest check went over really well. The group buy went over really well. It's pretty much generally accepted as one of the more uh, popular 65% on the market right now. And I think Box Key and uh, L. Baron, who is Smith & Rune, did a very good job on that. Now, they are setting their sights on a different layout. Uh, although, I do believe, aside from the layout, it's effectively the same board from what I can tell. 
Some slight differences, but yes, it, it, for, the, for the broad strokes, it's the same board. It's basically uh, the uh, the Iron 165 extended to a TKL format. So other than the changes to the layout, the biggest change is in terms of the plate, which we'll get to shortly, uh, because they have done a diff- well, they've done the same analysis they did on the original one, and we'll talk about what they did previously when we get to that point in, in the IC. Um, and, and they've basically redone that, which is the biggest difference other than the layout. But um, yeah, it, it, it has all of the same features that we've seen before. So seven degree typing line angle, a full isolation gasket mount as well that we saw on the 165. Uh, the front profile is just as low as the other board was as well at 17 millimeters. It has a seamless design. Um, we'll talk about the plate in a second. USB-C daughter board, uh, which is the standardized AIO3 um, version. Uh, QMK and VIA compatible PCB. And additionally, they're also going to offer a color matched Rune Artisan keycap as well. So uh, this is with their Smith uh, and Rune logo uh, on a uh, keycap, which was previously done by Salvin. And you can see that in the very uh, top opening post on what would be the F13 key, which is really rather nice. Um, in terms of supported layouts, we've got pretty much everything you could need for a TKL. You can split the right shift if you want to or not. You can split backspace if you want to or not. You can have ISO or you can have ANSI, uh, and you can have a variation of both bottom rows, either the uh, 6.25U space or the 7U space if you want to go uh, uh, for that route too. Uh, as well as that, you can split the left shift to fit with the ISO, and you can also have stepped or full caps lock. Um, in terms of the uh, the plate that we were going to talk about before, you might remember when we covered the I-165 that they did the FEA analysis on the plate, which was to try and work out how to get the plate not necessarily as flexible as possible, but as consistent as possible. So no matter which key you press, the feel is the same across the whole plate. So the key feel seems, feels exactly the same whether you're pressing A or Q or L or K or whatever you're pressing, it feels exactly the same and it gives you a really consistent typing experience. So they've basically replicated that for this particular board and that has led to to a number of cuts in different places, which you can see uh, through the uh, the images that Brian's showing. Now, there's a couple of different variations on this and they went through, and they actually show all of the different iterations that they went through, um, trying to kind of spread that out and showing all the numbers to make it as consistent as possible before they settled on the final version. Now, that's the ANSI one. There is an ISO one as well, I've been told and confirmed. There is uh, an ISO version of the plate, so uh, I'll be interested to see what that looks like. But it should offer a really good, consistent feel across the whole board, which is really, really good. Um, so, yeah, not necessarily the most flexible of boards, uh, but uh, definitely one of the more consistent ones. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're using metal plates, let's be honest, whether it's brass, aluminum, steel, um, you know, copper, you're not really going to get a ton of flex anyways. Like, you're just really not. It's just kind of a firm typing experience to begin with. So I kind of like that, um, at least for the metal plates, they're they're shooting for that uh, that level of consistency. And I think it's, it's really commendable um, to think about that they put in so much time to get two plates right for this, an ONZI and an ISO, which I imagine do have different designs, but all for the same exact feature. And I think uh, it shows a lot of passion and hard work um, went on Absolutely. behind something like this. So. Yeah, it shows that they've been thinking about it and it's not just something generic they've come up with. Technics asks, uh, did they accomplish that with the 165? Did all rows feel and sound the same? So what I would say is that um, when I built the 165, uh, Baron knows exactly what I'm going to say here. I'm sure he's not watching at the minute, but if he is, um, the switches he sent me to build his board with uh, were not lubed the best, I must say. Um, <clears throat> uh, and they were really rather squishy. But what it did mean is that uh, the, you could tell that the board felt consistent. No matter where you type, it felt consistent. In terms of a sound, there was a difference in sound between the profiles, but that wasn't necessarily the board that gave a different sound. It was the actual shape of the keycap. So you've got to remember that a Cherry Row 1 keycap is going to sound different from a Cherry Row 4 keycap. Uh, and I only used uh, Cherry and HSA on there. So whilst the rows sounded differently, it was the keycap profile that was making a different sound rather than the actual board. It's been my biggest uh, impression of the board. Of, of board itself without keycaps on uh, as best you could tell the keys all felt the same and would have sounded the same uh, i didn't actually do a test where i put like uh, row four across the whole board or row three across the whole board or anything like that just to test it maybe i should have done in hindsight but i do understand that the uh, fe165s are potentially going to ship in the next few weeks so when i do that build stream i'll absolutely do that test for you yeah sounds good so uh definitely looking forward to this one are you going to be trying to get in one of these, Jay? Yes. Yes. I, I'm not usually a TKL fan. I've only got a handful of them. I've got a couple of Janes. I've got the Vern. Um, uh, but uh, this this is definitely one that I, I want to add to the collection. Uh, and there's the main reason for that. Uh, and that's because there's this lovely dark green 
version of the board. Uh, and I'm hoping that makes it to group buy because it fits with uh, a key set we're going to talk about shortly. Um, that that does look, really well with it. that does look absolutely incredible. I'm not pretty lie. good, right? You know what it also looks also... incredible? The e white with the botanical on it. I am just falling in love with this already. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Uh, the only thing I'd change about that is I'd have a copper base with it, but, uh, you know, that's just me. Um, the, the other set that looked really good on the green one, Perestroika. Uh, that would look absolutely fantastic on the green board as well. So. Interesting, interesting. Uh, and uh, big shout-out to Langolandia, who is also a birthday boy. Uh, he's in chat right now. Um, I did have to send Langolandia a message twice because Discord was going a bit messy before, but I wanted to wish him happy birthday whilst it was both of our birthdays at the same time for each of us. So it's me in the UK, it's after midnight, it's my birthday. It's Langolandia's birthday right now as well. Um, so happy birthday, my birthday brother. Happy birthday, Lang. Thanks for showing up on your birthday. You should be out. Well, I guess you shouldn't be out. Never mind. You should be quarantined, isolated, watching Top Clack. That's what you should be doing. Stay at home, folks. That's right. That's right. But yes, of course, we will be talking about uh, this set later on as well, so no worries there. But yeah, yeah, look forward to this. This is this is nice. We have lots of information, yeah. lots of renders. Of course, the interest check is laid out well, as expected. And I mean, just like the Iron 165, I expect this to go over pretty well as, uh, as well. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll definitely be looking for this. Whether or not I will be looking for an FE version, if there is one, or whether I'll just be getting the standard one. Uh, I don't know, but uh, I definitely want that green one if that runs. That's going to be the one I'm shooting for. Yeah, that, that's a that is a combo right there. I'll tell you what. <sighs> it's such a good color. It's how such you, a good color. Just be, just for my curiosity, how do you feel about the F13 on this board? Do you feel like it's forced really just like because it. it's kind of trendy, or like is that is that actually what TKL users are liking these days? Uh, for me, I'm not a TKL user traditionally, uh, but I actually prefer it with the F13, and the reason for that is really simple. It's visually more pleasing to me because it mirrors the mm -hmm. escape key and the gaps between each of the F clusters, so F1 to 4, F5 to 9, and so on and so forth. They're um, exactly equidistant apart, so you've got an, a, a common blocker between them. If you if you don't have the F13 key, the blockers either tend to be of different sizes or things don't quite line up properly. Um, I think this is the most visually attractive version of a TKL, but that's just my personal opinion. Of course, people feel free to disagree or agree or whatever you want, but um, uh, it's also a great opportunity for them to shield their uh, um, Smith Rune caps, right? So, yeah. you know, why not? Oh, um, uh, Nitaru also actually brings up a great point. He says, F13 pushes F1 through 12 to the left, um, which can be nice for games. I totally agree, too. I mean, as a gamer, I kind of uh, I kind of sympathize with that as well. Sometimes it can be hard to reach um, up to your F row on some TKLs. So I never actually thought about that before, but that's a, that's a pretty cool feature. I can't really tell if I like it better or not aesthetically, but it does provide some level of symmetry that I think I have been missing in TKLs. Yeah, and it comes with that key for it as well, so you get that as part of the kit. It's oh, do you? Kit. So you're not having to look for a, a oh. set that offers a F13 or buy an artisan to put there or anything. It actually comes in there. Vox Key's watching. Uh, hey, Vox, good to see you, man. Uh, interesting, he also says they're looking at carbon fiber as well. Um, yeah, so uh, I think the carbon fiber in the 165 is going to be pretty special, so uh, I'm glad to see you considering that as well. Yeah. Yes, it is. What is the uh, the default plate material here? Is it brass? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yes, is that what it was on the, the one six five as well, or did they have the they have aluminum version? Brass or copper for the FE? Uh, I can't remember if there was an aluminum version or not. Uh, the only the only other question I've got, which um, uh, isn't answered in here, as far as I could see when I was looking through it, is: Is there going to be a wing keyless version, or is it all going to be wing keyless? So Vox, hmm. you, you might be able to give us a. a, a, a an answer to that one. I don't know if it's public. I imagine. Well, at least in their <clears throat> in their finalized plate, they have a spot for a win key switch, and I assume that with a plate this well designed, they wouldn't have that spot if it was actually going to be win keyless. But uh, no, he maybe... he says he says in chat, Vox Key, Langlandia, Ashley. Okay. Uh, everyone co everyone confirms there will be a win keyless version. Excellent. So um... that'll make a lot of people happy. You, yeah, you can write down my order now, uh, Vox Key. It's, uh, it's that green one uh, with copper and uh, wing keyless. So, I wonder, uh, <laughs> I mean, no, no, no offense to the Smith & Rune guys, of course, but I wonder why they didn't choose to render a wing keyless version of this when knowing that as TKL people, like, that's what they like the most. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to call him, I call him Ashley all the time. I know it's not his name, but I call him Ashley all the time because it's funny. 
<laughs> All right. New renders are coming. There you go. New, new renders, renders are coming, coming Brian. Oh, new renders are coming. Nice. Excellent. As if I wasn't already happy enough with this interest check. It just got I mean, I, better. I have I have to be honest. This is the this is the other, other than the Jane. This is the only TKL I've seen in the interest check that's jumped at me and said you need to buy this. Understandably so. I mean, Vox Key and, and Baron are both both super nice guys, and the product yeah. looks pretty fantastic. The interest check is pretty fantastic. They've uh, they've been proving themselves already, so I I don't see any issues here. This looks pretty nice and. Hell, I'll probably I'll probably try to get in on it as well, depending on what yeah, the group is. Yeah, I've never been as excited for a TKL as I am for this one. <laughs> nice, yeah. And props on those plates, man. That's some that, work. That of. that must have taken some serious, serious time and effort. Got to respect that for sure. All right, let's move on to our next keyboard topic here. Interest check for the raindrop sixty percent by Laneware. And uh, this is a rather interesting 60% board. So it is a gasket-mounted 60%. Um, let me try to find... They have an exploded view, right? Yes. So it does have, uh, you know, tabs and these kind of probably pour-on strips. So uh, a mounting system very similar to what we see in a lot of other boards these days that we uh, we kind of saw Key Colt start doing. However, this board also supports tray mount, too. So if you have your own, let's say... Uh, PCB and I, I don't know if plate is changeable as well, but you can uh, you can uh, tray mount this or you can gasket mount this depending on uh, which PCB you're using. So I found that kind of interesting. It's not the first time we've seen that kind of functionality, such as the uh, the G60 is the the one I can think of off the top of my head at least, where it had kind yeah. of a, a dual or even I think maybe even three style mounting system. So kind of have yeah. uh, different options happy. here. Yeah, the K-Mac happy as well. Very uh, very vintage, very classic. So the um, the inspiration here is designed kind of around lo-fi hip hop and rainy days spent inside. So he has kind of some really really tiny reference images, to be honest. But this is effectively uh, an anime stylization of a girl with an umbrella standing in the rain. She's probably contemplating her existence. If you're a fan of lo-fi hip hop, this is nothing new to you. you you're probably used to this kind of stuff. But uh, it seems like that's the inspiration here as well. So a couple quick specs. The housing itself will be aluminum. There will be a brass weight, which is uh, shown here. I'll show you a better picture of it in just a second. Um, like I mentioned before, you can tray mount, or you can use the gasket mount. It's going to be kind of like an E6.5 style in a way. 18 millimeter front height and a 7 degree typing angle. So pretty nice stuff there. And if we scroll down here, we get a couple more renders, and you get a look at the way this weight system kind of works, which is kind of nice. So um, the weight kind of protrudes outward with the aluminum on the board so you get this kind of uh, interesting curve on the bottom back so how do you feel about the raindrop jay um uh, so, so, so i like the fact that there's multiple different ways of uh, of mounting the board and one of the things he does say later on in the thread as well if you haven't read it is that the standoffs will be removable so if you don't want to use the standoffs for the pcbs and you want to just go sell the gasket you don't have to worry about the pcb pressing against those standoffs that's not going to happen the, uh, the the standoffs will be removable um so very similar to the two mid posts that we saw on the uh, on the mechanist boards uh reminder you've got seven minutes guys if you're gonna jump on that early um so the the interesting thing for me is is that it's got the multiple mount styles. I'm not a fan of the design. I think in terms of the shape of the case, I don't like the fact that the top bulges out like that. It kind of feels like it's trying to emulate something like the canoe that had the left kind of uh, chevron shape. Um, and it just doesn't work for me. I also think that the logo on the base, the whole raindrop with the, uh, the characters, is just too big. It's way too big, way too bold. Um, it, it's not something that works for me personally. That being said, I can completely see why some people would be attracted to this and why they would like that. Um, but for me, the the real interest on this is is the two different mounting methods and how those are to be implemented. Uh, other than that, doesn't really work for me. Yeah, I gotta agree. The design is not entirely for me. It looks kind of interesting. It looks kind of unique. From the top, you almost have kind of like a... Uh... I don't know, like a smartphone kind of look. It seems to kind of emulate the space a little ways on, around the edges here in this kind of inlay, in my opinion. And uh, mm. the, the, the top the top is a little funky. I kind of like the way the uh, the weight plays into it, but I'm not sure if I like the entire thing aesthetically. Um, the side view actually reminds me a lot of the... Um, what was that board? The Aquaria? The one that seemed, oh, yes. it seemed kind of popular, but actually like didn't really do very well in group buy. Yeah, Oscar, uh, I think, ran that one. Yeah, I remember yeah. that one. Yeah. But, like, it didn't really seem that bad, so I don't know. 
But uh, it seems yeah. like it kind of has a similar similar kind of side profile here with that swoop and this particular angle. So I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. The, I guess. The, yeah, the interesting thing as well is that there doesn't seem to be any, uh, no matter which version of the board you look at, there's no screw holes to hold the top and the bottom case together. And there's also no mounting points for the weight as well. So it's not confirmed how that all screws together or fits together at the minute. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know if this is just really early in the design process and that's got to be done yet or not. Um, I, I don't think this is a bad board. I think some people are going to like it. And if you do, great. It's just not for me. It's very polarizing, I would say. Mm. I like the idea of the theme, though, as someone that um, has been listening to a ton of lo-fi hip-hop lately, and you know, obviously being in Washington, I, I have my fair share of rainy days, so I kind of like the idea on the theme, but I'm not, I'm not entirely seeing how it translates to the board, so maybe a, maybe a missed opportunity there, and maybe we can see a little bit more work and revision go into this before it actually hits group by. Again, this is just an interest check, so anything is yeah. up, for, up for debate and up in the air. We'll see. All right, let's move on to some key sets, of which there are not very many this week. <coughs> All right, starting us out with the interest check for SA2600 Round 2. This is by uh, York Chan, and it's manufactured by Signature Plastics. Uh, we've seen this set before, so it's nothing entirely new. This is just an interest check for Round 2, so there's not really a whole lot to say on it. Double Shot ABS SA Profile 112343 Standard SA Row Profile, designed by the same person, York Chan, so... If uh, you missed out on this last time, now's a good time to get into it, I suppose, once it actually does go left. Yeah, the big thing for me is that this was originally Max Key's SA, and now it's moving to, uh, to to Signature Plastics. So if you do prefer Signature Plastics SA to Max Key's SA, then you might want to take a look at this. Uh, the main difference being the actual uh, feel of the plastics, so Max Key's is a little bit more matte, and uh, uh, Signature Plastics is a little bit more polished. So. Uh, yeah. That's the big uh, thing here. Uh, other, other than that, we've we've seen it all before. There's no breakdown of kits yet. It's just uh, an interest check showing the original key set uh, on. Is that the Aki S? Is that what it's on? I'm not sure. I actually don't know what uh, keyboard this is. I... We've talked about it recently because I remember the really? side. Uh, yeah. Oh, do you remember oh. When we said they had the gasket thing on the yes, side. Yes. Yes. Um, um, holy crap! Chat's gonna get there before either of us does. They will do. It's, it's, it's going to drive me nuts. We did just talk yeah. like last episode. I think we even talked about it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Or it might have been the one before. <laughs> uh, I don't think it is the the Aki uh, S uh, blood in because it's it's slightly different. But uh, it's it's a square sixty. The square sixty, right? Square sixty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we just talked be, about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting colorway on that. I don't. I don't think that was uh, that was ever rendered in the actual um, thread for that, but. Uh, it, it does seem like it certainly could be the square 60. I see a little bit of an inlay there with the, the side plate kind of poking through and that bottom end. Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah. yeah. I'm excited for that board, man. But I gotta be honest, yeah. I, I didn't really care too much about this key set last time it ran, and I don't really care too much about it this time, but that's just because the colors aren't really for me, nor is SA yeah. Profile for me, so... I don't necessarily dislike the colors. I thought it was all right. I'd never bought the original, but um, yeah, I think this will do just as well as the original. The problem is there's not a lot here to talk about, guys, because all we know is yeah. it's going to be SA instead of Max Keys, and it's the same keys as before, but there's no kits, there's no breakdowns, so there's not really much else to say, but if you are interested, go follow this thread, go take a look at it, and, uh, and support uh, York Chance. That's right, and that makes it really easy for us to lead into our next topic. Um, which does have a surprising amount of information and renders and so on and so forth. So this is an interest check for PBT Grain by Langlandia. I'm assuming Green is how you're supposed to be pronouncing that. Uh, yeah, and kind of gray, grain. Gray, yeah. Grain, and, and yeah. It's colloquial, colloquial difference. Colloquial, be different. sure. Yeah. yeah. So this is, um, <laughs> it, it, obviously, it's like a portmanteau of gray and green. And uh, you'll, uh, of course, see that in uh, the set here. So if you like gray and green, this could totally be for you. Or you just want to support Langlandia, because he's pretty awesome as well. Designer of GMK at Cafe, of course. That was a very popular set. <laughs> and uh, this is his newest work, and it's kind of interesting. So it looks like this one's actually going to be ran on uh, TKC, if I'm not mistaken. So I think he's actually going to be looking at Infinikey for this, judging by the way the kits are broken down. Uh, yeah, it looks like it because uh, the base kit and then the Maggot add-on kit that we've seen recently with, uh, uh, with Led Zep, for example. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I actually do like this base kit breakdown quite a bit. Um, you know, I know Infiniki maybe not for everyone, and they have had a little little bit of uh, issues in the past, but I do think they are improving, and I do like a lot of the value that you do get from Infiniki. So I'm excited to see more people actually use it and uh, see what kind of more improvements that Infiniki can make, and hopefully we'll get a banger out of this one. But 
yeah, the the the, the one of the upsides, yeah. of course, to this set, um, you know, colors aside, is the fact that with Infinity you do get this level of compatibility. Um, for a relatively cheap price. Like, I think, I assume this base kit will cost as much as all the other normal base kits that we've seen lately from Infinity, which is like 80 or $90. Uh, yeah, I think or, we'll have to wait cheaper, and see for the. So. <clears throat> well, I think we'll have to wait and see for the prices. I'm not sure where they've been announced as yet. Sure, but you're right. It, 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 assuming. It, it offers a ton of compatibility, you know, um, whatever, whether you want to fit out a HHKB or whether you want to fit out a TKL or whether you want to fit out an ISO board, you've kind of got all of that compatibility in the base as well as a couple of novelties. So you've got uh, two of uh, Langlandia's lovely L shape and you've also got the AE squished together. I can't remember the name of that character, uh, but you've also got that uh, that cap in there as well. So, um, you know, lots and lots of different choices. Um, and uh, yeah, you can fit out pretty much everything. And if there's not enough compatibility there, or you want some accent keys, then the secondary mega add-on kit will give you UK ISO as well as Mac keys. Uh, it'll also give you some additional 40s mods and a ton of different accents as well as a ton of different space bars. So it's kind of like a huge um, uh, add-on kit. It also gives you F13, 14, and 15, <laughs> which is yeah. which is pretty interesting. And Alt GR. That's so. This is so interesting. And well, Alt, Alt, Alt GR is technically correct for any uh, yes. ISO board. So uh, yeah. Angry Alt, yeah, that should be there. So that's why it's in the uh, the UK kit. But yeah, it's yeah. good to see that. That's, uh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> and I think uh, last time we saw a Mega Kit add-on like this, it was about $35. So not terribly expensive either. So looking forward to the pricing on this one. Uh, Shout-outs for the comparison chart, because I love, love, love seeing these key set interest checks. Sometimes people are like, hey, it looks like this set. Well, now you don't have uh, a whole lot of argument here. Um, you know, he did forget to add, uh, things like GMK Shoko, GMK Dracula to this. Other sets that look exactly like this, obviously. Yeah, I mean, Shoko is a really big one to shout out. I think that looks really, really close to this. So, um, you know, I mean, people who already have Shoko maybe not want to pick this one up. It's, it's one of those things, but, uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Jokes aside, I do appreciate the comparison. I mean... Olivia, I guess you could... Olivia Dark, I guess some people could probably relate somewhat I, to it. But, I mean, I really don't think this looks like anything else. So I think no, it's, prob it's probably safe. No. And, I, and obviously, uh, we're kind of just memeing here. This comparison chart is sort of a joke. Because as you can see, Tarot and uh, Vaporwave are in here. And <laughs> I, I think we all know that neither of those sets look anything remotely close to this. So... Yeah, um, we, I, we had I, a great chuckle before the show about that one uh, <laughs> like that as well. We had a really good chuckle on yeah. Tarot and Vaporwave. Yeah, I, when I first saw it, I, I actually laughed out loud. So I, you got value out of this chart, trust me. <laughs> Way too close to Vaporwave, says Voxky. Uh, but fantastic. So yeah, I, I think green, both green and gray have been really popular colors lately, particularly the green. We've seen a lot more green sets lately. So uh, I'm happy about that because that didn't used to be the case. And now it seems like people are totally cool with it. And, and and the thing is, we, we've 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 discovered how to do good green sets as well. That's the thing because there's been plenty of sets in the past that have had green in that haven't quite hit the mark. The uh, the epitome of green sets for me has always been um, uh, the uh, the Royal Alpha set, uh, which is still to this day one of my more favorite sets but that was more white with green legends and uh, the, the the green mod pack for that was terrible you had to use the the white mod pack uh for it to even look reasonable um but we're now starting to see some really really good green key sets uh, come through so yeah really excited to see this one uh the the, the only one that this does remind me of and it's, it's not even anywhere close but using a kind of dark green uh gray color and the tan was um and it only reminds me of this in the uh in in the tan accent key in the tan accent keys is coniferous it kind of reminds me of the alphas of coniferous uh but again that, that's such i'm so i'm reaching so far for that comparison that it, it, it's not even true but um yeah you know. and i think at, at, at this point in time in our hobby i think we can all agree that every set is going <laughs> to be at least in a minuscule fashion like another set because you can only go so far away when you're using colors, I feel like. Always, mm -hmm. you, you know, yeah. you can change shades and stuff as much as you want, but, you know, you're still you're still left with colors. And some colors just look like some other colors, and that's the way it is. Um, moving on from that, though, checking out some of these fantastic renders, of course. Can we talk about this desk mat? Yeah, yeah, please. I don't think I've ever wanted a desk mat as much as I want this desk mat. I gotta be honest. Being from the UK, that's just kind of like my trip to work sometimes. Is that that picture? 
It's dark, it's grey, it's overcast, it's raining. I have to put my umbrella up. Um, yeah, that's my trip to work sometimes. Yeah, and though I think that this death mat is actually <laughs> probably laid out as well as it needs to be, I kind of wish... Uh, maybe the design was just shifted even just like a couple millimeters over to the left, just because where I use my keyboard is going to cover up a lot of this guy and his umbrella, and that would be sad. Um, I mean, obviously I still have a street light, which is kind of nice, but yeah, like when I use my keyboard, it's usually like around this area. Tilted for games, I'm like over here, but like, I don't know about the rest of you, but I hate covering up amazing designs with my keyboard or my mouse, especially when you're buying it specifically for the design because otherwise what is it it's just a desk mat so yeah um it's, it's like i considered looking at a, a flipped version of this like a mirror image so it was on the right so you wouldn't put your board with it and when i kind of did that on on you know on, on the yeah. pc and just flipped the image around it didn't work either that it just feels look right yeah it, it just looked wrong also so this, this this render by the way with the desk mat in the in the uh, <laughs> i don't know what board this is but this 40 percent looks like a minivan maybe but uh this this is such a cop-out render because yeah, of course, a forty percent is not going to cover that design. Of course, <laughs> Get, put a TKL there instead, and then we'll we'll put a TKL in that exact spot, and then we'll talk. <laughs> Sorry, like I got to give you a little a little shit on that one, but all jokes aside, I do think the desk mat is is uh, very successful. I just wish the design were maybe shifted a little bit, but I understand why they wouldn't do that. Um, I also like how much uh, French is in this. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, there's, I mean, like, literally everything's in, in, in French for all yeah, of the names of the kits yeah. and everything else. It, it's really good to see. Fantastic. So, definitely looking forward to this. Um, looks like pretty much everything's already been finalized, too, except for the price, which he does say uh, he's still waiting on final pricing. I was just ballparking figures earlier, of course, but he does have uh, all of the proxies up as well. And look at that. Look look at who's the EU proxy. What it. Who is that? That sounds... Prototypist? That sounds awful. I don't know about this. Yeah. That sounds shady, really, yeah. really skeptical at best here. Re really, really shady, yeah. Uh, <laughs> in interesting, that really little aside, um, uh, Jason reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and he said, uh, do, you, do you want to run a set but I can't tell you anything about it? I'm like, I only want to run stuff that I like. And he's like, yeah. you'll like this. And he was like, I had to go on pure blind faith with him that this was... Uh, <laughs> Uh, this was gonna gonna work, but uh, no, I'm really looking forward to working with uh, yeah. Hang on, yeah. Um it, it it is a conflict of interest, but if you haven't, you, you know, it's difficult for me to be on the show and talk about stuff that I'm involved in. Uh, and the more I do in the community, the more that gets difficult as well. So I will always never shy away from giving my honest opinions on stuff. But if something's running on my store, it's because I like it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, but I also I also like things that I don't run. You know, like uh, we talked about the um, the iron and stuff like that. You know, the, all of those other things and. Um, yeah. It yeah. turns it, out it, it, you can be a vendor in this community and still be a keyboard enthusiast. I promise, guys, you can yeah. still do that. I am one hundred percent certain. I, uh, I I didn't lose all of my opinions just because uh, I started to vend a few things. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, <laughs> it's incredible. Where... I know. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> it is right, um, but where, wherever I can, I would never, you know. Uh, when, when we when we talk about interest checks, I'm happy to cover them. Whenever it gets to group by, I will do the whole thing where I step back and let Brian talk through it because at that point, it's not fair for me to get involved and completely break that. Interest checks, it's just talking about what's there, and that's fine. We can do that together, can Brian and I. When it gets to group by, uh, as you'll see when this goes to group by, it won't be something that I talk about other than to give any factual information that Brian asked for, you know, pricing, kitting, that kind of stuff. Uh, at that point, it will be Brian that gives. Yeah. Time. Yeah. With that said, I do th like to think that our audience would be reasonable enough and mature enough to let you, as a keyboard enthusiast, share your opinions on keyboard-related topics, whether they involve Maybe. you or not. I would hope, I would really hope our audience is mature enough for that, but... Maybe. You know, yeah. we'll, but that, that, it'll that have was, to be a wait and see kind of thing, I, I suppose. It, it will. I mean, we, we Brian and I had this conversation a couple of times, and we we kind of flipped and flopped on it. So when yes. we did when I did the JO two with Upass and my keyboard and all of the other good vendors, we didn't actually cover that on the show, and it still did really really well. Uh, interestingly enough, just as I was scrolling on my screen, uh, a render for, the, for it came up, which way I ever <laughs> thought stuff was. But we didn't cover it at all, and people asked why. We got more questions asking why we didn't cover it than why we did. So the compromise that Brian and I came to when we released the interest for for example, the Lodestone or for anything else that runs through Prototypist, is uh, that we'll cover it in interest check, and then when we cover it in the group buy, I just won't talk about it too much. Yeah, and I'll because factual answers. 
Because the whole idea behind Top Clack is to get information out there and get, like, our opinions out there and try to help people with things they need help with. And if we're ignoring topics just because they involve Jay or myself, it's kind of a disservice to the community at that point. That's the way I view it. So I don't want to, like... I don't want to ignore topics just because they involve either of us. And I would hope that you guys can understand that. Yeah. And understand my, my that view... as what we're doing now, this is not supposed to be promotional material. Sure, we like this set, so it looks like it should be a promotional kind of thing. But there are things that we don't like as well. The idea in the news doc is to show you guys the news, let you know the details, and then let you know our opinions. That's the whole point of this. We're not trying to promote PBT Grain. Well, I mean... TKC is a sponsor, so obviously we'll be trying to promote it because we like it and they're a sponsor. <laughs> but, I mean, generally speaking, like, we go back to, you know, this this SA set, SA2600, or this raindrop or whatever. Like, we're just trying to get the information out there. It has nothing to do on whether we're trying to promote it or not. That's not the point of the news doc. Yeah, and I think the, the other thing to say on that as well is we will be completely honest if we don't like something. So if I do something in the community that Brian doesn't like, he will absolutely tell me that. He'll yeah. say, don't like it. And he'll be as blunt as that as well. If one of our sponsors releases something that we don't like, um, say a new Switch, yeah. and it's terrible. It feels awful. You know, I, I had the TTC Golds when I was looking at the Allison on the stream. Uh, sorry, Mike of Novel Keys. We love you and you love your stuff, but those Switches are not good. Um, but then yeah. again, I just got the... Uh, in fact, actually, something else I didn't try in mail call. Uh, as uh, who's in, in chat? Ashley. Ashley. I'm going to call him Ashley. I need to try and remember to do that. Um, it's not his name, but I want to call him. Uh, he sent me some of the purple Jurok stabilizers, which I didn't call out in mail call, and they're, they're really, really good. You know, the Jurok ones are really good, uh, and the color's really nice. So we'll call out stuff that's good, and we'll say stuff that's crap as well. We want, yeah. you know, shy away from that. Sp um, sponsors are never immune to information and opinions. They're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, every <laughs> single one of the sponsors that Top Clack has had has had a product that I am not the biggest fan of or that I just dislike or, you know, it's just the way it is. Like that's just what it is. And I'm okay with so, that. Um, so, so Brian, on that, on that respect, uh, what, what do you dislike about uh, our latest sponsor, Leandrin? It's funny. Cause as I was saying that, that's what I was thinking <laughs> because Leandrin as, as a storefront doesn't necessarily put out like as many in stock items as a lot of other vendors. So I'm trying to think of like what I don't like that he does. I didn't like when he did the Fiel round on Tight Machina, uh, which was that kind of like weird shootout, like high end product project that um, uh, Originative was working on. Remember Tight Machina? So I, I think uh, Mechanisk actually put out a Fiel on that at one point, and the case alone was like four hundred dollars. And I like the Fiel. I I was an original Fiel buyer. I liked it. I enjoyed it. It is not a four hundred dollar case. I'm sorry. It's just not. Is it a $300 case? It's starting to get more arguable. 290 still seems a little towards the high end for just for the case for me. But $400, I think, was just really, really unfair and kind of an insult. So I, that happened like two or three years ago, though. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's my uh, that's my big uh, mechanisk. Um, I, I, I didn't mean you to actually answer the question. I was just putting you on the I'm, spot. I'm honest. Um, I, I don't know. Like, it is the way it is. But I mean, but sometimes people make mistakes. Sometimes people do stupid things. I'm all about giving people second chances and rehabilitation. You and I see eye to eye on this. We know this. So. We do, yeah. It's, it's, yeah it's, rehabilitation it's, is it's, it's nothing different. But it's like, you know, I, now, now that I've met Leandrin, I've spent, you know, a day with him. And, you know, we talk all the time now. Like, he's a really nice guy. And he really is trying to do his best for the community. And... You know, with that said, he is a rather younger man, so he's not, like, you know, totally experienced in life yet, and, you know, he doesn't always know what he's supposed to be doing with all this stuff, and I, I totally agree. Like, I feel the same way. I don't know. I'm not always 100% sure of everything I do in my life or with Top Clack. Some things are just risks, and you don't know how they're going to happen until they actually happen. Yeah. Uh, Bearded Nothing does ask a question. He says, does the WT60D PCB fit in any Pokestar case out there? It should do, yes. It's it compatible should. with Pokestar, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a left side... It's, it's, it's a 60% and it's a left side um, uh, USB. Although I would say yeah. that because it does have the flex slot cuts, you should check to make sure you're not using a case that is uh, that doesn't have enough clearance inside uh, for that yeah. that particular flex. Because you might actually bottom out the PCB because <laughs> of the flex slots on the case. So. You might have to, yeah, or take out the middle posts or something like that, depending on the board. But yes, sure. it, it should physically fit, but you might need to tweak the case, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, uh, Bledon asks, what am I drinking? It's Iron Brew, baby. Yeah, Iron Brew. Iron Brew. I wasn't a fan of that. 
I gotta be honest. Uh, I, if I remember rightly, Sashimi was. He really he, liked it. He really liked it. It was, too, it was way too sweet for me. But uh, yeah. regardless, let's, uh, let's, let's stop rambling about this and move on uh, to some of our other topics for the day. So, of course, this was uh, PBT Grain should be coming in Infinity on TKC as well as uh, Prototypist and a variety of other vendors there. Shout mm-hmm. out. To, uh, to Lang on a good job. Well done on that. Let's move on to the group buy for GMK, White on Black, 40s, Culverac Plus, R0 slash R5 extension kit. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> incredibly informative. Multiple kits. Incredibly af- <laughs> informative title aside, this is effectively a, uh, a multi part GMK extension kit in which there are three separate kits. Um, they are all GMK, uh, White on Black. Which is um, indicative of, like he links at the very top of this, um, the mass drop slash drop GMK set, white on black there. Does say pre-orders are currently yeah. available for that, so timing obviously well-timed here. And he does have... Just before we get into this, do, do you think that, and as, as this is a slight aside, do you think that GMK white on black is quite possibly the most bought GMK set out there? It's like the most popular one. I know we've had group buys for like 3,000 odd base kits and stuff mm. like that, but white on black has run like five times. It's run three times on Oko, twice on Oko, sorry, and at least three times on Drop. Plus there's all the vintage sets out there that people have. I, I must have two vintage sets of it. I mean, I gave one set to Geo because I had so many sets of it lying around. I wonder if it's the most common set available out there. Hmm. It's, I don't know. It's it, an interesting we'll never thought. get any numbers. But. And you could be right. But, I mean, to that end, the, 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 the fact still stands that White on Black is an iconic set. And you mm. know, nobody... It, it's hard to hate, right? Because it's just two shades, <laughs> black and black, white. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's classic. It's, it's neutral. It fits on a lot of boards. I, I've never heard anyone really talk bad about it. And one of the best parts is it's usually really cheap. I mean, uh, I know yeah. which, a lot of the times when Drop was running, it was only like a hundred dollars, and when they stocked it, it was only like a hundred and ten. So it's like yeah. it's not terribly expensive. There was a there was decent compatibility as far as base kits go, but a lot of people are making those extension kits, and they seem to be selling fairly well. So I think well, exactly that's well, that's why I was leading into that question because yeah. all like Zoo Yin and everything else that's run all of these accessibility packs and all of that kind of stuff. Like it was dead easy for me to find someone that had the original originative version with UK ISO keys that they didn't need for my drop version. You know that was just really easy. Like I think I had like nine people PM me within an hour saying, "Oh, I've got those keys if you want." them you know so it, it feels like this sets it's pretty ubiquitous it's everywhere and nearly everyone has it at some point or has had it yeah. so um yeah it's interesting yeah. i have two versions i have a gmk and an enjoy pbt version of this set <laughs> i think i have Played. the enjoy pbt as well yeah. point of giving me crap in chat saying that uh i can't tell him that you can't hate it correct you you are absolutely right you can without a doubt hate black and white key sets you certainly can it's just a lot rarer than other colors, I would say. Um, <laughs> with that said, let's talk about the uh, the kits themselves. So there are three kits in this run. There's a 40s kit yeah. pictured there, a Culverac Plus kit pictured there, and an R0 slash R5 um, compatibility kit there. So, of course, that gives you row 0 and row 5. He does have um, a very nice comparison pick showing row 0 and row 5 from the side. So if you've ever wondered, yeah. if you've never used these before and you wondered if they could make your life better or if you would like them or not, uh, this should give you a pretty good idea. They are much higher. Row zero is basically just like a more intense row one, and row five is basically like a way more intense row it's, four. It's it's not a more intense row one. It's a mountain compared it's, to row it's, one. It's row zero. It's, it, I, it's okay. It's a similar. It's a similar <laughs> sculpt, is what I'm trying to get at here. Yes, okay. it is much larger. That is the point. But it it is very it's, similar in style to row one. It, it's interesting is Rose Zero if you've never used it before. In some of the vintage sets, it was really common. Uh, so it's definitely worth check, well, checking out. Uh, hot take for you, Rose Zero is Terry Bad. Row 5 is amazing good. So, um, yeah, I, I do like Row 5 uh, yeah. for a bottom row. Really, uh, really big fan. Yeah, the Row 5 is pretty awesome. I like that as well. I use that whenever I get a chance. I've actually never tried Rose Zero. I've seen it uh, in person on, on a few boards, but I haven't really spent much time typing on it. But then again... I mean, when you use row zero, what do you use that on? Like your F row, basically. It's like, still only on the F row. You, you, yeah. you don't use it on anything else, so it's kind of it's kind of whatever at that point. Those are keys I don't hit terribly often, regardless. But uh, all three of those kits now available at uh, pretty much your choice of vendor, whether it's MyKeyboard.eu, Novel Keys, Daily Clack, or Desk Hero, de- depending on your region. 
But mm-hmm. uh, they're all they're all fairly well priced. Uh, looks like uh, forty five dollars is going to be the uh, the U.S. price for the forties kit. Kolverak at forty two dollars, and the Row Zero and Row Five compatibility is fifty five dollars. So that one being the most expensive at fifty five dollars, not too shabby if I do say so myself. Yeah, uh, really interesting for these. I'm definitely going to be uh, picking uh, at least two of these out, probably the 40s one and the uh, the Row Zero Row 5 compatibility. Uh, again, big shout out to Tom. He's another of the UK veterans. Uh, so he's on the uh, uh, the UK, MK UK Discord, uh, often chatting away on there. So big shout out to Tom. Um, the only one I probably won't pick up is Colverac because I've never, ever even used uh, a Colverac board. So I've never even tried it. So... I'm actually yeah. kind of curious to to see if the Culverac one even meets the minimum MOQ of 150. I don't think I know a s- single person that uses Culverac. Uh, didn't Huey used to use it? Or was he Dvorak? He's Dvorak. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't... I mean, obviously 150 not that hard to reach, and I, I assume that vendors might buy out um, anything remaining anyways, because it is such a low MOQ, but... It'd be interesting yeah. to see how well this particular kit sells. Yeah, uh, I'll be interested to see how it goes as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, so... Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to put a prediction on it. Though. Yeah, I, I think the, I'm I not think gonna... the Row, row, row 5 compatibility kit will sell well. I think the 40s kit will sell well. Yeah. Yeah, it's if also going to struggle, it's going to be the cold rack. Yeah, it's also worth noting that if uh, if you didn't notice in this picture here, um, there is a a text 1.5 row three tab in the GMK minimal colorway, uh, because apparently that is the key that you are missing to support staggered 40s with GMK minimal. So nice foresight on that one. Oh, interesting. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's kind of cool. I like that. All right, so that is uh, that's available now, guys. Group is open now, and um, just like he posted at the top of this thread, the uh, the GMK White on Black base pre order is currently open on drop as well. So if you missed out on that, now's a good time to maybe pick up both. Yeah, yeah. Uh, M Papaya comes up with a question: uh, thoughts on the new accents on the latest run of GMK Black on White on Mashal? Ask us when we get to the uh, the end uh, of, of of the show. Ask us in the Q and A section, and we'll cover it there. Yep, we end every single episode like this with a Q and A at the at the uh, at the very end there. So very very simple, and we just get through them real quick and bang them out easy peasy. All right, let's move on away from key sets. Uh, but yeah, only three key sets topics this week. That was that was kind of strange to me. But uh, let's move on to something I'm actually really interested in. So this is the Mechanical Keyboards Mega Survey 2020. The mm. results are finally out. So we did kind of a, uh, a Mega Survey a while back, and now we have the finalized results. And uh, I actually haven't read through all of this yet, so I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to be seeing some of this for the first time with you guys. But I thought, be, yeah. I thought it might be kind of fun just to kind of quickly go through some of the stats and see if uh, we were expecting all of this or if some of these maybe are a little bit more curveballs because a couple of the ones I've seen have been uh, pretty interesting so far. Well, I think, I think the, uh, the first one that jumps out at me is, uh, is, is very much the, uh, the, the, the favorite type of switches. So there's a page on this, and I'm, I know you're reading off the PDF and I'm reading off the, uh, the actual uh, uh, images, but uh, the, the first thing that jumps out is people like a tactile bump in the typing. Um, so you know, roughly two thirds of respondents liked a tactile bump uh, with everyone else liking linear and almost nobody liking buckling spring or other, which include clickies and everything else. But then at the same time, almost, uh, or the biggest preference was for silent switches. And people like silent switches and then clicky switches second, even though they didn't like a clicky switch. They like a cl- clicky sound from switches, even though they don't like clicky switches, which were one of the other uh, in, in the, uh, the favorite type of switch. So it's, it's interesting that people have answered it that way around. I don't like a clicky switch, but I like a clicky sound. Does that just mean that there's no good clicky switches so... on the market? Or... <sighs> So the the problem I have with this, and I know obviously we talked a little bit about it before the show, and the way I kind of see RMK right now in its current state is it does have a lot of new users, and a lot of the more experienced users, like a lot of the people that watch this show, for example, that actually do build and tune their own keyboards, um, you know, they, they often do have preferences different than uh, what a brand new keyboard enthusiast that's just coming to the hobby and is just an RMK for pictures and stuff like that might feel. You know, most of those people do prefer the tactile switches. Cherry MX Browns, wildly popular. Wildly. Yeah. And as far as, uh, you know, keyboard sounds, most people 
do seem to prefer a silent keyboard typing experience because they don't want to bother people or something, for example. But oftentimes when they hear clicky, for new people that might not be in the know, clicky to them can also be the bottom out sound on a linear, for example. I've had many, sure. many, many people think that linear switches are clicky because they make a high pitched clack when you bottom out with them, for example. So, you know, sometimes people can kind of misinterpret things. I don't know exactly what they meant by this here. Um, if they actually mean only clicky switches or if they mean some kind of bottom out noise versus total silence. And whereas Thok, is that specifically a Chopra thing or do they consider Maybe. it a deep set? How do you quantify Thok? Um, yeah, I, so... I guess that's a good point. And, and uh, hi, my name is Adam comes out with a good point. It says, what if I use box navies, which have a clicky sound, but feel tactile-ish? So they are a clicky switch, but he's right. Clicky switches do tend to have a tactile feel to them. Um, so whilst we would put them in the badge of clickies, a lot of people might put them in the badge of tactile feel uh, and then have a clicky sound with them. So maybe that's how it's... Uh, how it's yeah. Like, I've always Switch. viewed clicky switches as tactile switches if they have a bump, but if they have a click, too, then I, you know, I consider them clicky switches. So, I don't know. Kind of interesting. But let's, uh, let's, let's, take, let's take a closer look at one of the first results they have. So, um, this is kind of interesting. For those that responded, as a group, we are generally intellectually curious and, and with some tendency towards impulsiveness and slightly introverted. So this was kind of like a, uh, I'm trying to, some of these pictures get really huge, sorry. But uh, this is basically, um, you know, the kind of personality traits of keyboard enthusiasts that filled out this mega survey, which I thought was kind of interesting as well. So, uh, you know, we have things here like neuroticism, neuroticism agreeableness, um, extroversion, um, you know, conscientiousness, and like openness. It's like, it's the, it's the weirdest thing, I feel like, for, uh, for a keyboard survey, but that kind of caught my, uh, my, caught my interest, I gotta be honest. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few things, and I have, I've flicked through it, but I haven't read it in, in, in a ton of detail, but I do want to spend some more time looking at this, and uh, maybe even talk about it a little bit on a, on a build stream as well. Sure. Um, but when you start to, to, to look into it, there's, uh, quite a lot of people have done a lot of things, like lubing stabilizers, swapping switches, almost everyone has, uh, that has done stabilizer looping has done switch looping, for example, but more people have done uh, switch lubing than have done stab clipping as well. So stab clipping isn't necessarily as popular as it once was, it seems, if you're using um, the, the, the cherry style uh, uh, stabilizers. So there's all sorts of really interesting things that come across from that as well. Um, I think one of the, uh, the really, really interesting ones is that QMK was vastly preferred to almost ever, everything else. Um, uh, the, the second one was what came built into the keyboard. Lots of the custom boards that people buy as well have QMK, so there is a lot of overlap between that one. So I almost kind of want to disregard that result, and if you disregard that one, QMK is vastly above pretty much everything. Uh, interesting, Jetpack Tuxedo gets a shout-out because he's got eight people voting for uh, uh, for his firmware on there. I didn't even know he had one, but apparently he does. So, yeah. uh, he, so I'm actually really familiar with him. I get, I've gotten drinks with him numerous times. He's local to the Seattle area. And uh, he can be a bit intense online, but he's super, super nice to hang out with in person. I had no nice. idea he had his own firmware. That is that is really interesting to me. But I yeah, think I think yeah. I think by trade he is uh, you know, some kind of programmer or something, so that uh, certainly doesn't surprise me too much. You know what's what's kind of interesting though is the um, I'm trying to find it. Some of these are kind of labeled strangely. So slightly more than half of the community has built their keyboard, their own keyboard. Slightly yeah, I thought that was that, interesting. That's, yeah. that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it, it goes to show you that um, you know how how accessible it is to build your own keyboards these days, or you know lube your own switches. It didn't that didn't used to be the case. Like almost nobody did their own stuff, and then now you know you you're kind of thought of as, as like a pleb and a noob if you don't build your own keyboards and do your own stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's it's interesting to see some of these stats. Yeah, uh, some of the other really interesting ones, just quite a couple of highlights. Uh, PBT was the most popular keycap material, significantly beating out ABS. So GMK lovers, uh, it seems like uh, PBT is the way forward. Um, what else jumps out at me? Uh, North America is by far the largest uh, um, uh, set of respondents, followed by Europe. Uh, so uh, if you add all of the European countries up, it doesn't equal one third of uh, the, the U USA kind of respondents. It just shows you how big the US kind of contingent is uh, in, in keyboards. 
Um, so uh, it's interesting to know there. And most of the uh, people are in their mid twenties as well. So uh, not on the younger end and not on the older end. Uh, so that puts me into the uh, now I have to turn thirty five. I've literally gone from the last stream to this stream, from one of these categories to another one, and now in the thirty five to forty four year old category, uh, which puts me out of the. Uh, uh, out of the main one, 25 to 34 years old. So I've gone from the main category to uh, to the third category. Interesting. We're getting older, yeah. Jay. I yeah, hope, I hope, hope, thunk it. I hope thunk that's it. a good thing. Um, yeah. One thing I, I liked uh, quite a bit in this as well is the, the question is, not including keycaps, what is the most you have spent on a keyboard? Most, most of us spend a maximum of $100 to $300 on a keyboard. That was the overwhelming... Um, uh, Pray the Jay Thompson <laughs> keyboard boomer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You are what a boomer, but kind of interesting. Yeah, so only uh, only eleven or only sorry, uh, one hundred and thirteen people that fill out this survey has have spent seven hundred dollars or more uh, on a keyboard. Most people spend between one hundred and three hundred, which really does go to show you that that's where we yeah. need the most competitiveness in our uh, consumer market. Is we really need those value centered boards. Yeah, one of, one of the questions that I do feel has been addressed kind of incorrectly is on uh, is on page sixty. If you want to scroll down to this one, uh, and it says uh, that most of us have up to twenty keycap sets, and I feel like this one does the community a little bit of a disservice as well, uh, because zero to twenty is kind of like a huge range. You know, lots of people have three or four or five key sets, but you know, fewer and fewer are going to get up to twenty. So I think all, it's not surprising that almost everyone has up to twenty key sets. Um, that range is kind of strange. Zero it, to it twenty is. really? Like, I'd have probably done zero to five, zero to five, five to ten, ten to twenty or something like that and, and split that out a little bit more because I think zero to five is where you would see the vast majority of that. Yeah. You can you can tell way. just by the result of this question that this question was not asked properly. Yeah, yeah. Um interestingly one person has got hundred to hundred and twenty keycap sets, that's huge. Is that you? Uh, I, I didn't fill this out, so no, that's not oh, me. Oh, is Oh man, who else? Who else but you could have that many? Mr. Keebs. Mr. Keebs. I'm 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 betting it's Mr. Keebs. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I don't I don't know if, I don't know if I'd come in the hundred bracket. I'd, it'd be close, I yeah. guess. Melody um, says Olivia. Olivia could potentially have that many key sets. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm three quarters of the way to a hundred with just GMK, but I couldn't yeah. put a number on how many SA and DSA and. DCS and other PBT King Camp sets I have. Uh, it might be close to 100. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to count. Yeah. Well done with vintage sets. Uh, well done. No, that's all lies. Well done's just got one vintage set that he just keeps recycling across all of his boards. Yeah. I'm that's, joking. He doesn't. He's got thousands. Yeah. That's funny. The key set, um, <laughs> how much people are willing to spend on key sets is kind of interesting as well. So, I mean, it seems like a lot of people are actually willing to spend a fair amount of money on key sets. Yeah, ni nearly 90 people have spent over 300 US dollars on a keycap set, which is, is huge when you think about it. Yeah. That's all of those Serica flips and laser flips and all of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's really interesting when you think about it. Very, very interesting. Yeah. I don't know. This is This stuff always kind of fascinates me. It really does. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different questions in here. We can't cover everything that we'd like to. Uh, oh to, yeah, to no, we're not going to go over all this. <laughs> but I, I would really, really recommend that you guys go and have a have a have a look uh, in there. Uh, one of the um, uh, one of the really interesting things that uh, that happened as well is there's uh, on slide 22. There's a question that says Reddit remains the mo the main community, but closely followed by YouTube and Discord. And I think that's actually just because most people on Discord didn't fill this out. My gut feel is that the Discord community is much much larger than the Reddit community now. We've just spread in different pockets and different areas. But if you took it as a whole collective, it would be probably larger than the uh, uh, the Reddit community. Um, so yeah. Uh, C Madrid says, "What did it say about ISO?" I haven't actually found that in there, so I don't know if it, it, it's in there. And I've just missed. Oh no, I have. Um, uh, I have just found it literally. So uh, ANSI got uh, fifteen hundred responses, and ISO got three hundred responses, give or take. Um, UK ISO being the the massive majority of those. Uh, Nordic and DE and everything else being a lot smaller comparatively uh, but i'd love to see the the source data for this and have a have a play around with it myself at some point but um yeah, yeah. as as always expected um iso is is you know about 20 to 30 percent of um of, of users i think we've always known that that's the figure um the one of the interesting figures from the previous round of this that i always like to put my finger on is that the size of the eu community is roughly the size of the community in just washington state in the us alone 
which kind of really puts things into perspective. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, another interesting stat here that I, I like quite a bit is how long have you been interested in mechanical keyboards? About half the people said 24 months or longer. So two years mm. or longer for about half of these people. That's, that's pretty interesting. And only 264 have been here five months or less. For, for, for what, what I would say as well is that um, this hobby isn't one that's like a flash in the pan for many people. It's not the kind of hobby that you, you join and then leave after a couple of years like some people do. Like, you know, everyday carry people kind of drop in and drop out of it. This hobby seems to have staying power. Once you're in, you're hooked. And I don't know if that's because you're just using the device every single day and it becomes a daily input thing and you're always thinking about it. Or if it's just because people just genuinely do enjoy this as a hobby because there's so many things to look at. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, and another stat here that I think, uh, like the key set one was probably pretty poorly ran, is the number of mechanical keyboards you own also went from 0 to 20. And that was, as you can see, basically everyone. So. Oh, what's what, what slide is that on? Uh, I'm interested in uh, that. That's uh, the same one as oh, the uh, timeline. Yeah. 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 Uh, 100 to 120. That has to be Mr. Keeps. Yeah. Oh, look, look at I think look I... at this. Look at the uh, the preferential keyboard size. Sixty five percent is actually the the winner here. Out uh, out dueling sixty percent even. Impressive. I did not. I still thought sixty percent was more popular than sixty five percent. Very mm. interesting. Look at how forties are coming on though. Forties are, are vastly growing, which is good to see it's as true. well. Um, I have a I have a weird fondness for forties that I can't explain and can't describe, but. Uh, I do really like them, so that's interesting to see. Uh, just jumping back as well to your uh, most of his own fewer than twenty keyboards. Um, it's really interesting that there's 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 two people that are eighty one to one hundred and one hundred to one hundred and twenty. There's two people in that bracket. Um, this one's got to so, be Mr. Uh, Keebs, right? It has to be. It's got to be him with the keyboards and the key sets. It's gonna be him. Gonna yeah, he, I know he's got more key sets than me, and I know I've got more keyboards than him, but it's got to be close. But we, what we both know from this is that Hata didn't fill this out, because if it did, there'd be a 600-plus marker on this set. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Also, check out the um, uh, the Anzi versus ISO in the, the, the localization layout. Anzi, Anzi with, obviously, the huge lead, ISO with... Uh, with the, the second place, but still ISO being hugely over things like Ortholinear, JIS, uh, Ergo Docs, Ergo in general, yeah. apparently. Um, so that's kind of interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Uh, interesting as well, very few people using ANSI left shift and ISO answer. Um, I think uh, I can name a couple of those. West Foxtrot, um, Chris Wires. I don't know if these guys filled this out or not, but uh, there are a few people that do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, depleted is Vespine as well. Oh, in fact, I got this wrong way. It's ANSI left shift and ISO enter. So this is uh, this is probably more the US ISO layouts. Uh, so uh, depleted Vespine, that one's for you. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Oh, ruining the world. Uh, all right, check yeah, out they... the uh, the final picture here. Is the last one we're going to touch on is um, the uh, the typing style. So. 1,167 people said they were touch typing properly. 622 people claimed to have an unorthodox method. So that's that's kind of interesting as well. I I would have thought more people typed properly in this uh, this kind of hobby. Twelve steno users. Big shout out to those guys. Though, yeah, because that's tough. That is not easy to do. Yeah, very very interesting. Oh, the last stat here: the words per minute average. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Two hundred and twenty three people don't know their words per minute. Five hundred and one people between seventy and ninety words per minute. That's the uh, that's the dominant category uh... there. Yeah, I'm just outside that. I average about 68. So, yeah. Just well, I mean, that's that. that that's the the overwhelming average is between 50 and 110. Those are the three biggest leading categories by far. So, as long as you're within 50 to 110, you are uh, you're well within Doing this, right. this average at the very. I mean, yeah, I've I've always considered anywhere from like 90 plus to be like pretty good. So I don't know. I guess other people uh, can take that. As they will. Some people think, you know, 50 is super slow. Some people think 50 is fine. Some people think 100 is slow. Some people type it like 180. So, you never... As long as you are comfortable with it, that's the yeah. main thing. Only two people that filled this out type at 170 or higher. That doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. We've got a couple of people that do it in the UK. When we go to meetups, they can do it in a 
confined test and, and hit that kind of number. Uh, Cypher Sage says, how do you type, Jay? Uh, badly. Um, so I learned, I learned to uniquely, type... Uniquely, uh, please. This is wholesome. Yeah, all right, uniquely, yeah. Um, so so I learned to type on an old ThinkPad when I got my first job and I had a ThinkPad laptop. And uh, I used to, I used my fingers for all of my typing, including the space bar. And the main reason for that is because I would have one thumb on the trackpad and one thumb on the mouse buttons on the ThinkPad. And then my fingers just did all of that. So I didn't ever have to move away from controlling the mouse um, because my company at the time, they refused to allow us to use USB accessories. So I had to use the trackpad. I couldn't yeah. use a standalone mouse. Um, so that's just how I learned to type. And if you ever watch me type on my uh, my build streams you'll see that my thumbs hover below the keyboard in that position because that's just naturally what they do now and i can't get rid of that learned behavior it's yeah. a real struggle for me to, to fight it you're also uh one of the index finger spacebar users aren't you because of that reason yeah yeah, yeah. um so there are a few of us out there there, there are a few more than I, I know of like four or five just in seattle yeah so, yeah, Upas, Upas is uh, is, is uh, index finger space gang as well. Um, <laughs> oh man! In, in, interestingly <laughs> enough, when 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 I when I game and stuff like that, my thumb automatically goes to spacebar um, yeah. because well, that, that's just how it, it is. It's, it's weird because I have a similar effect too. When I'm typing, I never use left shift. Never. I exclusively use right shift. But when I'm gaming, oh, really? Left shift feels fully natural. Yeah, Obviously. see, I only, so ever use, I only ever use right shift for, for if I'm typing a question mark. That's literally the only other time I use the right shift key. The rest of the time, it's always left shift for me. Yeah, interesting. And it's it's weird. So many people just adapt to these wildly different typing styles, and like that's just normal for them, and that's what becomes comfortable for them. I think at the end of the day, it really does harken back to what you started typing on, how you started typing. Um, just yeah. like what you just said with a ThinkPad and yourself, Jay. It's like, that's how you start. And then if you would try to adapt to anything else, it's difficult because it's not what you're used to. It's not the normal for you. So yeah, that's always yeah. kind and, of and the thing. The, the thing is as well, don't let anyone tell you that your typing is bad, guys, as well. If you're happy with it and you're comfortable with it and it works for you, that's perfectly fine. You know, you can have proper touch typing technique if you really want to do and that's you know absolutely something that you could uh, you could go and learn i've tried in the past but if what you do works for you then there's no reason for you to change that uh, as long as you're not getting yeah. injuries or strain or anything else like that that's the only time i'd recommend you change your typing that's true style too. If, if yeah. you're getting problems but um yeah but if you're worried about ergonomics then you're probably going to be using different keyboards and you're probably going to be using very um or at least relatively light springs. You're probably not bottoming out your switches. You're probably not using wrist rests. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of factors that go into typing ergonomics. It's not necessarily just uh, how you learn to type as well. But yes, it, it could be said that typing properly probably does give you better ergonomic benefits than maybe some of the uh, more unorthodox styles out there. But with that yeah. said, if if you are comfortable with it, that should be worth something at the very least. Yeah, to, uh, to to not Geo, Jeff Leopard and Ten Strong. Uh, stop trying to gatekeep the hobby. It doesn't have to be good typing technique. Just be happy. <laughs> yeah. You know, we can like different things, and that's all right. And we can all just move on. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Speaking of moving as on, long as you're not in pain. we have it. been, uh, yeah, yes, as long as you're not in pain. Let's move on to uh, our, well, I guess it's second to last topic here. We have an intro yeah. check for some uh, simple Korean wrist rest by uh, C Costa, Costa, one of those, one of those two. Um, effectively, uh, Costa, Costa. Yeah. Okay, that's that's what we're going with. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of a, a relatively long interest check, I guess you could say, with a lot of information. But the uh, the general kind of theme here is he has um, uh, he has a lot of leftover Korean from uh, his other work, effectively. And because of that, he wants to make Korean wrist rests for our community, which I think is pretty cool. And it looks like he's going to be offering um, sizes between 40% and full size. And uh, prices will range from about $35 to $55, depending on uh, which size and style you want. And he has a few different uh, color options available as well. Um, white, black, and onyx, uh, which I think, I think onyx is freaking amazing. I'm assuming this is onyx, so I think that's, uh, that's quite nice as well. And, uh, man, some of these look pretty darn awesome. And it's, it's, it'll be kind of interesting because we don't really still have a lot of Corian in our community. Obviously, uh, with the it's Tesla Tron Luna well. situation, yeah. that didn't really happen. And, you know, whatever you want to think about that. But no one else is really working with the material either. So uh, it'd be yeah. nice to kind of see a little bit more of it into our community at the very least. So I, I'm in favor of this. And the price you know, seems reasonable. <laughs> Corian's not terribly I... expensive to begin with, so... I'm, I'm I'm gonna drop a really really quick teaser for something that I've got coming up, but it's it's not quite Korean, but it's similar. 
Oh, that's, that's what I'm going to show. Oh, that's what I'm going to show. Yes. Okay. I, I won't say any more on it though. Okay. Fantastic. So yeah, he does have uh, some comparisons here across some other different materials. He's got a he's got a palm Sirius, so you can see kind of some of the color variety as well as a um, acrylic tofu here. So yeah, price doesn't seem terribly high. Um, color choice a little weak, but uh, I think those are three decent color options. And uh, yeah, other than that, it's a Corian wrist rest. Not that interesting, mm. but could be cool. So let's move on to something that is uh, is very interesting in our community, actually. Uh, a lot of people very much into Key Cult, and they just recently put out, uh, I, I don't know, a, a newsletter of sorts, I guess you could call it, uh, addressing, you know, the COVID-19, all the, the usual stuff that you'd expect. But um, they actually have a few other things going on right now, too. This is kind of long, so I'm going to paraphrase some of this, but... Uh, Effectively, what they're doing is uh, they they rented or bought, I guess, I don't actually know uh, what happened, a new office and shop space. And uh, wi along with that, they have also acquired a CNC machining center, um, which they link yeah. here, a Brother Speedio S1000X1, which I, I don't really know a lot about, but as far as I'm aware, that's like a, a like $100,000 or $120,000 or $140,000 CNC machine, so... It's, it's depending That's, on the options they go. I think it can sure. go up to about two hundred thousand, but um, it, it's pretty serious high end uh, high end piece of machining. Yeah, which is cool because what this means is Key Cult is moving more towards their own self-sustaining studio that can do all of their work in-house. I mean, ideally, that's what all of us are headed towards, right? All of our vendors, content creators, manufacturers are moving towards something like this because they have full control over the things that they do. So that is basically what's happening there. They're going to be trying to uh, focus on more of their own projects using their own um, sources and materials. They are still going to be outsourcing some things, though. The number three, which is currently still in development, is still being produced by Salvin. That is confirmed, and that is awesome. Love Salvin. Thumbs up there. And yeah. uh, the number one series still looks like it's going to be done via their um, manufacturer in China that they've been using up until now, which is understandable. Um, they, it, it is pretty decent quality, and you know it's you know partially because of them that Key Colt is where they are now. So you can't uh, can't really fault them for that. So it looks like the number one series still going to be handled by them. The number three still going to be handled by Salvin, and everything else is going to be done in house. And uh, it looks like their timeline is actually not looking too bad on some of this stuff too. So the uh, the printer actually, or not the printer, sorry, the CNC machine actually got delivered on Monday the twenty third, which was the day after they made this post. So mm. um, that's that's pretty quick. Um, and then they it was being installed the day after on uh, Tuesday the twenty fourth. So pretty I interesting. I think I saw some pictures on their Instagram of it actually. Yeah, maybe I didn't. Yeah, they did uh, say uh, that no. uh, they will be sharing a lot of their uh, their stuff on social media coming up. So it, 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 it wasn't Instagram because I just had a look at that. I did see some something somewhere, or maybe it was something that someone posted a picture of one of those brother machines installed, and, and that's where I saw it from. I don't know, but um, either way, yeah, I'm sure I've seen some pictures of those machines somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of. Um... I kind of t took a little note about this on the uh, the last stream that we did on Saturday when, when we actually had Salvin on stream. So one of the things that's super cool about Salvin, apart from being an, a, an incredible guy, is that you know he's a keyboard enthusiast that also does keyboard manufacturing and other various manufacturings, I'm sure. But he does keyboard manufacturing and he's a keyboard enthusiast. We don't really have those in our hobby as far as CNC machining goes. That's incredibly rare. Salvin is one of the only, so... To actually have someone else in the community that's going to be getting a CNC machine and being able to put out their own work and possibly even the works of some others, um, if they choose to, uh, you know, do kind of a commission thing and have other people run their designs through Key Cult, is going to be really interesting to see because when you have that kind of communication um, with someone, uh, and I think the example I used in that stream was, you know, a lot of the a lot of the Chinese manufacturers that we use today can put out good work for sure. We know that, but. They're not keyboard enthusiasts. They're just doing their job. They make, you know, they're metal manufacturers. Like, they, they, they CNC metal, and, like, that's what they do. They don't care that they're doing it for us. They don't care that they're making keyboards. But people like Salvin, people like Key Cult, they care. They're keyboard enthusiasts. They're in this hobby just like the rest of us. So the yeah. fact that they can actually be able to do that in this hobby, and we can do that within the hobby, I think is a really cool thing and a really big step towards a good direction for our community. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think the, uh, the the more that we can do this kind of thing, the more that we can take it into our own hands, all of that kind of stuff. You know, I know there's a lot of people that like having things, you know, made where they come from. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's huge to me that we can do pretty much everything in the EU from uh, with with salver manufacturing key ca- uh, sorry keyboard cases. Uh, you can get PCBs manufactured pretty much every country these days. Uh, you don't have to use you know uh, the, the the Chinese manufacturers, um, and then even down to getting the key. In, the, the, the keycaps themselves from Germany and all of that kind of stuff, or from Singlish Plastics in the US, if you're over there. The fact that we can do everything in kind of like a local, you know, Europe's roughly the size of the USA, give or take, it's kind of really nice to be able to do it in that local community. And I, I've always said that I love to support the EU and the UK kind of group buys and stuff, and I, and I do. So being able to do that and move some of their manufacturing in-house for them into the US is, is really, really good. And, of course, they're learning a new skill as well, learning how to machine. Yeah, which is not easy. Yeah. It's, it's not easy to learn how to machine stuff. It's very it's, uh, much it's a, a first step in this process. It's a first step. It's going to be a lot of work for them and a lot of time. But once they learn how to do it, it's going to pay off huge for them and our community, I feel. But like I said, I, I do think this is probably just kind of a, a first step in the right direction. And I, I think that's kind of reflected by a comment that Jack Static actually makes when he says, more salvins would be nice, but it takes more than buying a CNC to make good products. I'm sure Keycult will put in the work and learn to take the necessary courses, instruction to make a good keyboard in-house. Totally agree. Mm-hmm. I have full faith in Keycult because of the products they've been putting out so uh, so far and just how nice they've been to everyone in the community. Um, I, I assume that this is going to go pretty well for them. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. And I think that it's yeah. it's only a good thing for our community. I really do think we need more we need more salvins. We need more key cults. You know, we need that uh, that level of control. Because when you have someone yeah. that gives a damn about keyboards and you and the community making your keyboard for you, that's a way better outcome than an hourly worker that doesn't give a shit about you or your keyboard. So, no offense to them, yeah. of course. It's not like they can't do good work or anything. But just having that level of in-house control and uh, passion, I think, is big thumbs up there yeah i think i think jack's is jack's that's is pretty pretty close on the head here it's like uh, uh usually by diversifying in in the past you know a lot of vendors have had multiple manufacturers for things so we've had you know we might have two different factories in china for example that do stuff and to bring some of that in-house as well as use external uh sources as well is, is always a good way of doing things like it's it, it, it's no secret that um some of the lodestone prototypes that we do we're doing with salvin as well you know um as well as with with our chinese partners so we they're trying to diversify that and have a look at different qualities and different perspectives and different pricings, and different costings and all that. It, it's the right thing to do for any business. So, you know, absolutely agree with them on that. Yep. Fantastic. And I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing where this goes. As I'm sure yeah, a couple, of, a couple of people corrected me when I said it wasn't on Instagram. It was on Instagram. That is where I saw it, and it was on their stories. But, of course, Instagram stories expire after 24 hours, which is why I couldn't see them. Um, but, yes, uh, so I, I was right the first time when I said I'd seen them on Instagram. So do go follow Kiko if you want to see them uh, do things. Someone did mention as well that they've already milled a piece of aluminium. Um, I didn't see – oh, Captain Schwa said it. I didn't see that part, but I did see some pictures of the, of the machine, I'm sure. Um, so go check those out. Uh, and also check out Salvin's Discord – and sorry, Al- Salvin's Instagram story for a real insight into how he does his machining and the process he goes through because he uh, he offers some huge, huge insights into it. Yeah, Salvin's Instagram is honestly nuts. And it's really, really I, exciting to watch. Every morning when I get up, now that I'm working from home permanently, is I check Salvin's Instagram stories just to see what he's done the day before, just to see what he's going on because it's so interesting to me. I like to be hands-on and do things and get things done. That's why I'm constantly uh, 3D printing things. In fact, let me uh, let me give you guys a tease. Uh, so um, uh, you, you guys know the Lodestone. Well, what about the Pebble, the Lodestone numpad? Uh, we have been 3D printing these over the past couple of days. So I like to do stuff and make stuff. I would love to have the space and the opportunity to do proper CNC work. Uh, it would be great. Um, I did have a, a Chinese CNC uh, kind of mill that was designed that was very open framed and it wasn't designed anywhere near as uh, to, to do what what you can do with metals and stuff like that and it, it basically burnt out on the motors just cutting some wood parts but it was only like I don't know, two grand or something it was only cheap um, so I, I would love to, to, to be able to uh, to get something maybe not as the same price as the uh, the brother CNC but uh, maybe one of the cheaper <laughs> hands because I'd love to do that in the future yeah 
Absolutely. All right. With that said, that is actually the end of our news doc. So we're going to be moving into our Q&A in just a moment after we talk about our lovely, wonderful sponsors. So if you do have questions, guys, make sure you use the at top clack tag so it picks us out uh, in the chat a lot easier. We can see the questions so much easier that way. It helps us out way more than you think. So please, 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 if you have a question, tag us in it. And with that said, starting us off today, we have the wonderful, the one and only, Novel Keys, of course. He still has uh, GMK Taro round two going on live. It's still doing fairly well, and it has uh, a pretty amazing price as far as the base kit is concerned, at the very least. $110 for a very, very nice and rich base kit. Love seeing that. Of course, they also still have the GMK Boba Fett Star Wars set. This is an officially licensed set, so it is a little bit more expensive, but if you're a Star Wars fan, you're a collector maybe, this could be totally something for you. They also have the um, the GMK White on Black extension kits that we were just talking about a few moments ago. So this is the US vendor if you wanted to pick up that. 45 bucks gets you a 40s kit um, with that uh, extra minimal compatibility as well. Or you can do, you know, row zero, row five, $55, pretty cheap. Or if you're a Culverac user, they got you covered as well. They also still have the GMK RGB add-on kit that we talked about last week. 60 bucks gets you a ton of RGB accents if that's your thing and you're maybe a little bit more of a an OG in this community and you like that look, could it totally be for you? Of course, they still have lots of other things in stock, whether you want switches, springs, lube, uh, uh, plushies. Maybe you want a Gator Ron because Gator Ron is freaking fantastic. I don't know. There's something for everyone there. I like Novel Keys because it, it really is one of the uh, one of the few kind of one-stop shops in the community. And if you are buying in-stock items from there, use the promo code ClickClack. That uh, doesn't help us out. Um, any, in any way other than let's Mike know that, uh, you are buying from them through us, which is pretty fantastic. And it'll give you a 5% discount as well. So very nice on that. Make sure you put that to use guys. Yeah, absolutely. Jumping over to our second sponsor of the night, it is Kono.store. Uh, you can reach them on the link I've just posted. Uh, so as always, they've got a ton of pre-orders open, so they don't have any keycap sets in group buy right now, but they have got uh, pre-orders open for all of the sets that you may have missed quite recently. Uh, GMK Hero, GMK Copper, Cat Oasis, you name it, it's there. Ursa, Shark Bait, they're all there and available on the main. Uh, screen so you can go and join those for a pre-order uh, which means you, you will get shipped at the same time as the group buy sets go uh, it's not actually joining the group buy but it's pre-ordering uh, as well as that they've also got the kale pro and sweet speed switches back in stock as well so there's a number of different variants of these i won't go through them all but they are all on there as well as multiple different switch testers and uh, some of the other kale switches as well including the heiko true switches um, uh, so yeah do check out those if you're looking for some switches uh, as well as that, they've also got the Hex Gear set. So they've got the Gemini, the X1, and the Ventures. These are in stock, ready to ship keyboards. Whilst you're working from home, if you need a quick keyboard, uh, you know, if your wife's in the kitchen like mine is and she needs a keyboard to type on, this might be a good way of getting her something for relatively decent for a really good price to be able to type away on and, uh, and clack away on. If you've got a friend, it might be a great birthday present. It might be a great Christmas present. Uh, we're a while away from Christmas, but think about it. You're good to have these things planned in advance. Easter present, whatever you want to do. Uh, it could be a really good way of getting someone into the hobby. So uh, definitely go check those out as well. Yes. Next up, we have the lovely KBD fans, who has a few things going on right now. So the uh, the wait list for the Bella 75% is still open. And uh, it looks, wait, is this a, I haven't seen this yet. Is that like a, a PC version? The polycarbonate version, yeah. I'm trying to, it showed up, but now I don't know where how to get it back. That's so funny. You just have to wait for it to, you have oh, to, man. It to scroll around. That's, yeah. that's, that's so funny. There you go. There is. There is. There is. Yeah. Oh, man. Feels <laughs> feels bad for the rotation. But that's uh, that's kind of cool as well. Is that is that polycarbonate or is that acrylic? I can't actually tell. I don't know. They haven't said. I think it's going to be polycarbonate, oh, okay. but um, I, they haven't said yet as far as I, I legitimately haven't seen that, uh, that version of the bill yet. Um, regardless, they do have uh, a couple things going on right now. If you want a carrying case for maybe your 60 or 65% keyboards, they have a, a pretty inexpensive option here. Only $35 in that particular group buy. And they do still have uh, all the other things that they normally do. Lots of switches and, and stabilizers and some, uh, and some key sets. Lots and lots of key sets. They do still have all of the Enjoy PBT ABS double shot key sets. Uh, I've been recently using one of these and checking it out. While it's not perfect or absolutely insanely amazing, I do think it is pretty solid value for $69, and you get a, a relatively decent amount of compatibility um, out of that as well. So that could be something for you. 
if that is more your thing. Of course, if it's not, they do still have uh, all those other lovely things I was talking about. And if uh, you're looking to save some money, keep an eye on the B stock market, because sometimes you can find some uh, true bangers in here. Looks like there's nothing in here yet, but uh, or at least at this moment. But sometimes you find some pretty wicked things in there. Yeah. Uh, also, speaking of wicked things, you should check out the key dot company. Uh, just posting the link into chat now. They've got a few things going on at the moment. So Jim Key Luna is uh, open until April third. So if you like space themed sets, then this might be something you want to pick up. Uh, I've already bought a set from the EU vendor, so definitely do check that out if you're interested. Uh, as well as that, they also have uh, a new desk map, which is the Tangerine Switch desk map by uh, Hoi Him. I'm going to say I might be pronouncing that wrong, but H O Y H Y M Hoi Him. Uh, so if you like the Tangerine switches and you like the look of the new ones, then you might like that desk map. So that's also available and in group by now doing quite well. 12 out of 20, almost there at MOQ. I suspect that'll make it in the next day or so as well. Uh, if you're looking for more of a keyboard kit, they do have some TKC 1800s. These are the unpainted ones, but these are going to be uh, available. Uh, they're in stock and shipping by Friday, so just a couple of days. If you order today, it will ship on Friday. And they start from just $179. Uh, if you just want the PCB, uh, that's in stock as well. And they also have different plates as well available. So you can pick up multiple different colors of the plate. You can pick up PCB and you can get the unpainted kit for just $179, which is pretty good. Um, and maybe paint it yourself, do something fun, do something fancy. Uh, finally, just a big shout out to their uh, key rate of Cherry Profile ABS blanks, which are only $24. These are probably the easiest way to try Cherry Profile out there right now. The cheapest and quickest thing to ship. Uh, just grab a set of these. It will really show you whether you like Cherry Profile. Uh, for the price, they're pretty much unbeatable and they come in an absolutely vast array of colors. You know, there, there are hundreds, well, not hundreds, but there are dozens of colors on there. You know, you can pick up pretty much any color you want, whether you want a hot pink or you want something that's a little bit green or you want something that's a little bit purplish or even if you want brown. You know, the, the choice is yours. The choice is there. $24. Can't really beat it. Yep. Can't complain. And last but not least, of course, our brand new sponsor, Mechanisk. It's got a few different group buys going on right now. So we actually just got uh, word in the chat that um, the uh, the newest round that he just launched is actually the biggest run that Mechanic has ever had. He's already sold more units from it than anything else. So that's pretty amazing wow. so far. That's that's already looking fantastic. But uh, if you haven't gotten there yet or you don't know what the heck we're talking about, um, th for the rest of the day at least, for the rest of this, uh, this timer that you find at the top of your website, the Fiel Round 5 is still open, as well as the, uh, the new Clippa... Uh, T round four, if I'm not mistaken on that, and um, lots and lots and lots of options here. So you have the Fiel with lots of different color options, plate options, uh, PCB option, super awesome PCB. But uh, I really think the Clippa is uh, the overwhelming star here. While the Fiel is awesome, I think the price on the Clippa T kit is just too freaking good. 120 bucks for the case. You can get it as the kit for 199. Your your choice of color, your choice of plate material and layout, as well as that uh, WT 60D PCB, which I honestly do think is probably the best 60% PCB on the market right now, as far as uh, general consumer stuff is concerned. So uh, make sure you jump in on that, too. And that PCB is available standalone, too, in the store, too, if you just want to grab one of those. But, um, yeah. you know, with, with that in mind, there is a cheaper Clippa T Round 4 in polycarbonate. If you want to save 10 bucks and you prefer polycarbonate, you can get the removable tray posts in there as well. You can get it with a plate, with a PCB, $189. You got to like that. Gotta like that. Yeah, it's, li it's literally in my basket right now. I have one literally right at the side of me. I've got my basket open with a clipper T and the WT60 DPCB <laughs> ready to go as soon as the stream's over. I, so. I, th I think I'm gonna. Ch I think I'm gonna buy one of these after the stream too. To be totally honest with you, but uh, <laughs> I I'm so interested uh, in the polycarbonate version. Yeah, exactly right. The polycarbonate. Big shout out to Plume Keyboards as well, who's raiding with a party of forty. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, welcome, good folks. Welcome to uh, to Top Punk. Today's yes. our new show. You've caught us right at the end of our sponsor segment. Absolutely, Oot. Um, absolutely. So we are actually going to move back to our Q&A section. But yes, make sure you join in on that Clippa group I, or the PC Clippa, or the Fiel, if you're a, you're, you're a baller and you like those really heavy 60% cases. But yep, shout out to yeah, the Plum right. Keyboards for that raid. Appreciate that, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Thank we, you for joining. We've already had quite a few questions roll in, too. So, of course, you guys can <laughs> keep asking questions. Make sure to use the at top clack tag, and we're just going to... We're just going to start this off. Depleted Vespine asking, Last week I asked for the weirdest theme for a keycap set. Uh, you mm. had seen and you went for a joke set. Pooped in the pool. <laughs> now I ask, what is 
the weirdest serious theme you've seen so far in a key set. Okay. Weirdest The weirdest key set. serious theme. Interesting. Oh, um, why do you gotta put us on the spot like this, that? This is this is really tough to answer. That's, this one. that's really tough. Because no matter what we say, we're probably gonna be insulting someone. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's always been some some weird themes, like the SA2600 set that we talked about earlier on, that's themed around some Stephen Hawking stuff. You can go look that up if you want to. Um, you know, you've got Olivia, which is themed around rose gold, so it's just themed around one thing, a colour uh, or a type of metal or a type of material. Um, so, you, you know, you've got such a vast array of themes out there. Um, I, I'd, I think the, 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 the biggest one uh, off the top of my head, the weirdest one, is actually a set that I really, really love. Uh, round 2 is in Group Bowing now uh gmk tarot it's based off bubble tea but it's a really good colorway you can probably see it on the board behind me i've got on my skb6 it's just on the wall behind me here um i absolutely love that key set it's really really nice and it but it's a really weird theme when you think about it bubble tea who'd yeah. have thought to do a key set around it well Poit did and it worked really well so i guess that would be my answer for what's the weirdest serious theme because i love that colorway i think it's a really great idea the round two is doing really well and uh it's an obscure theme when you think about it would you say that Taro is a more obscure theme than Iberico Ham? I, I, I'm not counting stuff that started grouped by from uh, April Fool's jokes, so that's why I didn't mention oh. dogs, I didn't mention MAGA, and I'm not mentioning Hamlet ah. either. Because those started as April Fool's, they didn't start as serious. But they ran, and they ran successfully, Jay. But it, yeah, I agree. They ran successfully, apart from Mago, which is never going to run. Well, American Um <laughs> I'm talking about Hamo, and which uh, a couple of people brought up in chat. Hamon, yes. Um, so you, you know, I think for, for me, those started out as as jokes. They didn't start out as a serious interest check. The first post about them wasn't something that was serious. So I don't feel that they fit the bill of the question that depletes the best of nasty. Okay. A lot of people are saying Honderbite. I think Honderbite might look pretty weird, but like, what's the actual theme of Honderbite? So yeah, it's not really a theme. It's paying homage to the, the, yeah. the key set that started it all, like a, a trade show that GM, or GMK or Cherry went to, uh, showing how they could produce multicolored ABS keycaps. That's literally what it was designed to do to show off their technology. So I'm not really sure that's a theme. Uh, Bellafonte is a good shout. Um, Bellafonte is a really good shout. I mean, Mondrian is also a good shout as well. Not Modrian, Mondrian. I think it is. Um, I wish that Mondrian would come back actually, uh, but as like a full key set, not just a voice one. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know Jay doesn't like it, but I, I would probably say Hamon, I think. But I think at the same time, I think it, any 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 set themed after food is pretty, like, arguably on the same level of weirdness. Um, not to say that weird is bad, because I like food. <laughs> and, I, and I bet all of you probably like food as well. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah, weirdness... Uh, Pokemon... Pokemon Kids says GMK Skeletor. I, I don't think that's a weird theme. It's a it's a cartoon that a lot of people grow up loving. That's not particularly weird. That's not oh, unusual. Oh, what, how did we forget this? 8008. Sports bra. A, bra. a sports yeah. bra. A pink sports bra. There you go. There's my answer. Yeah, I think I think I th you go you go with you go with 8008 and I'll go with uh, I'll go with Taro. There that's, we go. That's that's fine. All right. Uh, a cy Cypher Sage? C Cypher Sage? I think it's Cypher Sage. Cypher Sage, yeah. Okay, is asking, uh, what do you guys think of the Rama Jewels top mount? Uh... It's going to be a solid board. Yeah. We talked about this on the show yeah. last week. You can go watch our previous uh, show uh, to get that. I think the colors are interesting. The uh, the dark gold base, I can't remember, the Uro or Auro or, or something like that it was called. Yeah, yeah that, that's really nice. Uh, I don't think the board's for me uh, as, as an owner of the uh, the Vern. I don't think I'll pick up a Jules, but um, I think it's a solid board. Yeah, it's. I mean, it seems. I think it looks pretty nice. It's elegant. I think Zombiemon knows what he's doing. I think Rama knows what he's doing. The board looks nice. I bet the QA and QC will be great. I bet the packaging will be great. I bet uh, little to none of the units will have any real issues. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a really successful group buy, and I think the board looks nice, and the price is reasonable as well. Yeah. Uh, depleted of Vespine asking uh, as requested by Langlandia. Uh, he's asking, how many second cousins do each of you have, and have you met them all? So I'll start us out um, really easily, actually. Uh, I actually have no idea, and I'm not really close with the majority of my family. Um, at least, like, outside of, like, my sister and, like, my dad. 
Um, I mean, my, my mom passed away a while ago, but like the only people I really talk to in my family these days uh, are my dad and my sister and uh, occasionally one of my aunts. Everyone else, I, I have no idea what's going on in anyone else's life in my family. Okay, uh, a second cousin is my cousin's child, right? Is that right? Uh, let's let's look at the uh, the the actual definition here and uh, see what Google says. Yeah, second cousin, a grandchild of a grandparent's sibling. Uh, so that's a really to answer. So if it's a grandchild of a grandparent's sibling, none, because none of my grandparents had siblings. So there we go. All right. Uh, M, M. Papaya is asking, what emerging keyboard and keycap design trends are you most excited to see? What keyboard fads are you excited to see go out of style? Hmm. That's a good um, question. So, so design trends I like to see. Uh, new innovations, people doing new things. A really good example of that is what we've seen with the FEA plate analysis on the iron boards. A uh, really big fan of that. I'd like to see that on more boards. I know we've seen it on the Evolve as well and a few other boards as well. Apologies if I don't mention your particular board. Uh, I'd like to see more of that. Um, I also like to see that we're experimenting more with mount types. So there's not just gaskets, there's multiple types of them. There's not just top mounts, there's multiple types of it. More innovation that affects feel as well as sound is, is what I'd like to see more of. Yeah. Um, so for the first part of that question, um, I would say what am I most excited to see? Uh, I got to agree with Jay on the innovation. What I want to see is I want... I know this is going to sound really crazy and silly, but I'm ready for the MX footprint to die. Um, Interesting. Not, 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 not so as to say, like, MX switches don't exist, but the current... The current design of MX switches, I'm ready for that to evolve because that's what we've been using since, like, the 60s or 70s or whatever. And, like, how have we improved on it? We haven't. Like we put in different optical springs, we, we we lube we lube them. Yeah, but like optical switches aren't really a thing yet. Like they kind of are, but they're kind of not. And our community, like let's be honest, doesn't really give much of a damn about them on the products that are out on the market. I'm ready for a new version of a switch, um, something that really breaks the definition of what a switch can be. And it's not just like oh, it's smooth and it's like a vintage MX Black. No, open your minds more. And think about what a switch could be in a keyboard in this hobby. It doesn't have to be a 40, 50, 60 year old piece of technology. We can do better than what we have now. And it's sad okay. that we just keep rehashing the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to your uh, upcoming redesigned switches, Quakums, when you get those out of the market. I never said I would do it. I said that's what I would like to see. <laughs> 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 Obviously, I, I don't have the money for molds and R&D and experimentation and shit, so... Obviously, I'm not going to be the one doing it, but I would like to see us maybe try to use some technology that isn't five decades old for once. It'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I conversely think we should see uh, a return of some of the old switches. So Wilson's kind of touched on this, not maglev as such, but uh, Hall Effect switches, which use magnetic sensors. I'm a big, big fan of those switches and the vintage boards. Anarchy from the UK uh, has, has entertained me no end with some of his boards with those in. Um, and I would like to see a kind of good, modern equivalent of those. I know there's some projects in the work that might come up with something like that. I'm really interested to see how those come along. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think there, there are more technologies out there that we're not using in keyboards that we could. Optical this switches, is... Gatoron do them, Wooting have done them. There's no reason why we couldn't bring yeah. that into the customer market. And we we know now, um, obviously, I think a lot of people either don't care or they're just completely sleeping on uh, the Keystone from Kono. But Hata is putting in work with Kale to do a full switch design. That is brand new. And I think that shouldn't be overlooked in our community. I think that's a really big deal. And we need to make it a big deal. Because that's how that that's how that technology is going to move forward. With people at Hata, yeah. like, like Hata at the helm that are so smart and can do this kind of work. Uh, you know, working with manufacturers like Kale, who we've already seen has, uh, you know, they, they really do want to help our community. So, you know, it's... Yeah. It's going to be kind of cool to see, and I'm really excited for the Keystone to come out, because I think uh, even if it's, like, not incredible, I think it's a step in the right direction towards just using metal leafs for the rest of our lives in this community. Yeah, I guess uh, I, I guess one thing that I'd like to see as well is, you know, 
thing thing if you've ever watched uh, some, someone else mentioned Chrysan's videos a minute ago if you if you ever haven't watched his videos he does a really good video on what makes a keyboard mechanical and his ultimate point is that anything that moves is technically mechanical uh, so it's really hard to discount sure. anything what i would really like to see as well is some of those old uh, uh, foil and foam type of actuation boards they actually sounded pretty damn good and they had a really interesting unique feel there is no reason with modern material science why we couldn't come up with some foam and foil type boards today that actually work way better than what the old ones did and you know that could be quite interesting as well there's a thousand and one things people could do out there with switches and feel and typing experience and stuff like that um and we, we should play around with it more yeah, and I mean, sure, we have been pushing a little bit with changing uh, switch materials, you know, plastic compositions, uh, progressive springs becoming uh, more popular now, uh, you know, different lubes, different lube styles, different lube types, stuff like that. Like, we are pushing boundaries. I just don't think we're always pushing all the boundaries we need to, because at the end of the day, we're still using the same cherry footprint that cherry patented you know, six or seven decades ago or whatever. You know, it's and it's not like it doesn't work for us because obviously it does, and most of us still enjoy it to at least some extent. But it'd be nice for people to kind of open their minds a little bit more and realize that we can use, uh, you know, we can we can develop new technologies for something that uh, you know, frankly is 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 pretty mundane by today's standards. I mean, what is a switch? It's literally just you know two leaves that either touch each other or they don't, and that's that's it. That's what a switch is. Um, yeah, by today's uh, standards, and it's. I feel like we can do better than that. Maybe not me it, personally, it, but I feel like as a community, we can do better than that. For sure, for sure. It's me. Marius mentions that he works for Steel Series, and he wants to throw some love at the Omni Point Hall effect switches. I don't think they're bad, but I would. Lo I'd love to actually be able to do a, a custom layout with those switches, actually, uh, just to see what it would be like and, and try and, and work with them. But uh, I'd have no idea where to start. So it's me, Marius. If you can, uh, if we can come up with something collaborative there, let me know. Um, I'd love to work. With you. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, be interesting to see what we can do. Yeah community-wide going forwards but there's there's a lot more interesting things out there that we haven't considered yet it doesn't have to be mechanical switches you could look at foam and foil you could look at you know um rubber dome type mechanisms all sorts of things that we can look at out there topra is getting some love now with custom topra so you know lots of choices out there uh, better systems for stabilizers and papaya. Yeah, a really good idea. Um, I did have a kind of project working on um, uh, something with compliant mechanisms for stabilizers. So not so much multiple parts, uh, uh, but compliant mechanisms, moving parts. But I, I've kind of stalled on that. I need to find some more time to dig that up. But I'd like to see more people do that too. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, moving on here, we still have uh, some more questions to get through. So we're going to try to try to pick up the pace a little bit because we're already over the time we usually aim for. Um, so, Lay Brother Jones is asking, is split right shift good for 60% or should it stay on 65%? Uh, I, I would uh, say, I for, for me, it's it's a, it's basically a must on a 60% because there's little reason not to. You don't really need a 2.75U shift or whatever the size is, um, you know, on the right side of your 60% board. Just don't. So, you might as well use a key that's going to actually get some use there, and I think... Uh, I think it looks good, and I think it's way more functional, and that's how I build pretty much all of my 60% boards. Same. The The only time I don't split right shift tends to be on a... Um... Uh, on the TKL. In fact, the the only 60 I've got that's got a full right shift on it is my IDB60 Steel Edition that I built the other week, and that's purely because the key set that I wanted to use on it had uh, only had compatibility for a full right shift because it was a vintage set. Yeah. Um, so so other than that, I I would always split it on a 60%. Uh, anything smaller than TKL, I'm going to split the right shift if I can. Yeah, that's just, and I, and I think that's pretty much going to be uh, the general consensus if you talk to pretty much any other keyboard enthusiasts. Most most yeah. uh, most experienced keyboard enthusiasts that build their own sixty percent pretty much always split the right shift because there's there's a couple of reasons for it as well. Yeah. The, one, it gives you your FN key to the right of it if that's what you want to use it for, and another key there. And another one is it means using less stabilizers as well. It's one less stabilizer. Uh, and A1A says uh, split backspace and split right shift. It's two less stabs. Split left shift, and you'll uh, you'll lose a third. You'll only need one for your entering your space bar then. So. Um, oh my God! I so really big brain. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, moving on. Uh, Ravo with a question asking, I'm thinking about getting a DZ60 hot swap and a Klippa as a switch tester board. Would the polycarbonate yep. plate be too flimsy for hot swap sockets? 
Hmm. Probably Shouldn't probably. be. He should be okay. Is he? Yeah. So I, I wonder if he's referring to the um, the polycarbonate plate from Mechanisk because he's thinking about buying the Clippa, or if he's talking about the polycarbonate plate from, let's say, KBD fans who also always has DZ60 in stock, pretty much. Um, because those are very different things, potentially. I have one of the KBD fans, 60% hot swap, or not hot swap, um, but uh, polycarbonate plates, rather. And that thing is very, very flimsy. With that said, yeah. I have used it in a hot swap scenario, and it was fine. It was just a little annoying to work with at times, because it is, like, a super universal layout. Uh, I mean, guess what I'm saying is I, I would I would trust Mechanisk PC plate over the KBD fans PC plate in a hot swap scenario. I, th I think for, first and foremost, I think it'd probably be a bit more difficult to build because you'd be pushing them in the PC will be flexing all that kind of thing. Fine, but it's in a tray map board, so it shouldn't really matter. The only time it really matters with hot swap and the the, the, the switch plate needing a little bit more rigidity is if it's a top mount board or an integrated plate or something like that. Uh, and that's because then the PCB is just hanging there, and you you're really relying on how well the switches are pushed into the PCB to hold it in place. Uh, on the clipper, it's a, it's a tray mount board, so on the on the it's only if, if you use four posts or if you use all six, uh, you've still got support underneath the PCB to hold it all together and you're typing down onto the plate. plates, not lifting it up or anything like that. So I think it would be more than fine. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the build process might be a little more tedious than normal, but it should work out totally fine. We've done it. It worked. Uh, Teal Technic asking, what are some good options for switch housing to try the, uh, the UHM WPE stems in? All right. Um, so I haven't done a ton of testing myself. I'm, to be honest, I'm kind of waiting for the round two, knowing that the round one does have, um, you know, some some pretty uh, pretty serious consistency issues. So I'm gonna wait to do my major testing for the round two stems. But with that said, it seems like people generally have been preferring um, some of the Gateron options just because the Gateron options are quite a bit cheaper. Uh, I've seen a lot of I... people. I've seen some people use it in like inks, for example. I think that might be a waste of value there, but that's. Just I'd me. agree. I like them in uh, standard Gateron black milky top housings, black bases. I think they work really well in those. They also feel really nice in Everglide switches as well. But again, this is just me testing. I still haven't built a board for them because of the reasons that Brian mentioned. Uh, because the stems need a little bit of... You, you need to cherry pick which ones. Um, I haven't actually built a full board of them. I've just tested them in different housings. Picked a few good stems and tested them in different housings. But for me, the two big ones that jumped out were Everglide housings, the clear Everglide housings, and also the standard Gateron uh, housings with a black base and a milky top. Absolutely. All right. Uh... Still trying to catch up, guys. All right, Bearded Nut Inc. asking, what's your favorite switch type and top three switches? <sighs> okay. <laughs> Do, I, both of us hate these kind of questions nowadays, right? <laughs> Just because of the way we approach the community usually. Yeah, I mean, it always changes as well. I mean, if I had to pick three switches, if I could never use any of the three switches, I'd probably stick to linear MX style. Um, I, I would, no, maybe not just linear. So what I'd probably do is I'd probably pick two linears and a tactile just for variance, and I'd probably have Zelio's V3 as my tactile choice. Uh, any JWK linear, because they're all really, really good, uh, and Inks as well, just because I really like the sound profile of them. So... But it, it, it's such a subjective question, and that that you could ask me that on different days, and I'd give you a different answer to it because I feel differently about different switches as I use them. Um, like I really like the new Phoenix stems uh, from Utamu, uh, but ironically, I don't like them in Phoenix switches. Uh, in <laughs> Utamu switches, I like them in, uh, in other housings. So, and then of course, there's the bang for book question: Gateron black bases, milky tops, fifteen cents a switch, give or take, would depend on where you buy them from. That value is so good. <laughs> it, it's hard not to. I mean, you know, you know, that, that, there's a reason why I've got like, you know, six hundred of these because they're so cheap and they're easy. Oh, gaskets, by the way. They're just so cheap and they're easy to use. And you know, it, it yeah, I, it, yeah, it's a hard one to answer. It, you, you ask me on different days, I'm going to give you a different answer to that. But that's my yeah. answer today. Any JWK linear inks because I like the sound profile, and then Zelios for a tactile. Zelios V2 for a tactile. Yeah. Um, as far as my favorite switch type, I. I don't usually, I don't usually pick favorites like this because I'm more open to like how good that individual product is versus necessarily how much do I like it more than uh, this competitor or that competitor or other things. So I don't usually look at switches like that. But if I had to pick a favorite type, it would be linear. 
Uh, top three switches. Uh, I think Zelio V2 is probably my favorite switch overall right now. Uh, I just think it's a really nice, re defined tactility. It's super smooth. Um, and, and and now you go now you guys know I'm not lying about my feelings too because we're not even sponsored by Zeal anymore. Um, and it's still my favorite switch. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Zelios V2 probably my favorite switch right now. But I really have been enjoying all the JWK slash Duroc linears that have been coming out. I don't think they're perfect. I I do not think they're perfect. But I do think that they are quite good and the price is competitive enough. And uh, they're different enough from most other switches to kind of be a, a small breath of fresh air at the very least. So uh, let's say Zelios V2 right now, and then, I don't know, any of the JWK and Duroc Liniers. I'll, I'll say Marshmallows, because I feel like those are kind of unique enough. Um, and then 55-gram uh, Topra. That, that would, that's like my Desert Island board anyways. So 55-gram Real Force, if I had to use one board for the rest of my life, lubed. That's all I need. Cool. All right. Uh, Julian, Julian Media asking, probably asked a lot, but what's each of your absolutely favorite key sets? First time here, so I'd like to know. Uh, that's a great question. It actually doesn't get asked that often. Favorite key sets? Uh, Honeywell and Muted are probably my uh, equal, they're probably on equal footing at the top of my list. Um, there's a reason why I've got every version of Honeywell ever made that I can find because I really like it. Um, those two are up there. If I was going to pick something flashy, I I, I kind of like uh, Shoko and Taro. Again, you can see them on the shelf beside me. They're just next to each other. Um, and then if I was going to pick an add-on kit, my favorite ever add-on kit, without doubt, is Jim K. Unicorn. So big shout-out again to Japanese horror writer who sent me that a couple of weeks ago. Thank you very much for that, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I've... <laughs> I, I hate to sound like a broken record and agree with Jay, because uh, I, I prefer to disagree with Jay when possible. But uh, I I gotta agree. Muted and Honeywell are definitely top three sets for me. No questions asked. Um, as far as anything else, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I, I really like GMK Dolch from the Kekon run with the Icon mods, because I'm kind of an Icon... Oh, yeah. I'm kind of an Icon mod, you know, person. A lot of people aren't into that, but... Uh, yeah, I... <sighs> Honeywell and Muted are just too good. I mean, they, they, they go with basically everything, and they always look good doing it. It's just, it's hard to say no to that. As well as um, yeah. GMK White on Black as well. Like, it's just, it's so neutral, and it's so good on so many different boards, and, like, no matter what you put it on, it, like, looks good. So I, I, yeah. I've, I've always leaned more towards those neutral sets, though. I prefer neutral sets versus the flashier ones. That's kind of just always been my thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I like a load of different stuff. And again, it's one of those questions. You ask me on different days, you're probably going to get a different answer for the flashy stuff. But uh, yeah, Honeywell and Muted are always going to be at the top. Blending says no Royal Alpha. Uh, Shock, that's my favorite green set, and green is my favorite color. Um, uh, and it probably does sneak into my top whatever you want to give it, top five or whatever. I think we talked about four of the earlier on. It's top five sets. But um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's in my top three. But uh, yeah. Um, Royal Alpha as a green colorway with the white mods is 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 genuinely lovely, um, but there's so many good colorways out there. It's difficult to choose. And like days of the week, you ask me on any random day, I'm going to give you a different answer. You know. Yeah, it's it's kind of the same for me too. I mean, I, the way I think of it is like I might like another set more than. Okay, let me rephrase that. Let's say right now, I really like GMK Botanical. I think it looks fantastic. Um, and that might be my favorite set today. But you gotta you gotta also stay true to the originals, man. GMK Muted and GMK Honeywell are just too fantastic, too versatile. It's hard not to love yeah. that. Yeah, so. I agree. I agree. And yeah, Shoko's lovely, as that's why I mentioned it as well. But yeah, and and it's difficult to say for sets that haven't come out yet. So like botanical, it's not we've not seen it in the flesh yet. It's so hard to judge stuff like that, and there's, there's no right or wrong answer because it's so subjective as well. I mean, it, it it's just whatever you like, guys. Whatever you like. Yeah, um, it's a difficult question. Cipher Sage asking, have you guys tried out the keyboard tacits? If so, what's your opinion on that? No. I have never heard of these. Oh wait, no, they're, no, they're, they're, uh, we, it's a JWK switch, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, um, you, you, we have talked about them on the show. We talked okay, about yeah, it yeah. in 
I, for, uh, I forgot. I see the, the kind of like green tactile ones. I haven't tried them. Uh, I did reach out to Candy Keys. I think they were going to send them for the UK meetup, but because we've delayed the UK meetup, it was supposed to be Saturday of this week, uh, so Saturday coming. Um, and we've now moved it to November because of the whole coronavirus stuff. Um, so I think they were going to send some for that, but I, I haven't tried them. And they would go to the, the club secretary anyway for MK UK rather than myself. But uh, I haven't tried them. Uh, I didn't buy any, um, so I can't comment on them, I'm afraid. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on. ST13 is asking, getting here late, but thoughts on the next round of C3 stabs offering different wire finishes. I have I didn't not. Know they were. I didn't know that was a thing yet. Uh, I I don't see how that could ever be a bad thing, unless it's like way more expensive or worse quality. But I mean, assuming those things aren't changing, then why would you? Why would having more colors ever be a bad thing? Yeah, uh, agree. Yeah, more more choice is good or, for yeah. everyone as long as the quality remains the same. Yeah. 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 Or better. Or it, better. It can all. You know, you can always improve too. It's that's not a bad thing. Um, if needed. Let's see. Uh, J uh, Joseph Rojas asking, "What are you guys' What do you guys think of alpaca switches? Uh, they're I good. they're good. They're good. Yeah, they're very good. They're definitely one of the better linear switches on the market right now. Um, that can be kind of said about all the JWK direct switches because they are honestly quite similar. Alpa alpacas, mobs, marshmallows. They're all very close to each other." And I imagine uh, a, lot of, a lot of the other recolor ones coming up um, will be as well. So, uh, thankfully, the baseline is is pretty high already on those switches. So, you know, there's no there's no really way to go but up, which I like. Uh, X <laughs> XQC spills coke. Great username, by the way. He's asking, uh, all right, champs, what first case should I get? The Clipper T or Wait for Vega? Uh, those are Ooh. pretty different boards. Yeah, that's that's a complex question because I I, I would say they're not complex they're not they're not comparable they really just aren't they're not similar enough. Uh, do you want a sixty percent? Do you want sixty five percent? What case material do you want? Like, it, how much do you have to spend? You got we have to know your budget. We have to know uh, what kind of typing experiences you might like. But he does say first case, so I we you know we might not have uh, all all the information about what he likes to actually type on. Yeah, I, I think uh, for a starter board, the 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 clipper is is a really good starter board because you could put it with like someone else mentioned in chat earlier. You could put it with a hot swap uh, PCB. You could try a ton of different switches out there. You're still going to have a functioning keyboard within a few minutes. It's not a difficult build. You could then try lubing switches. You could then try clicky switches, linears, and tactiles. You could try so many things so quickly. Um, I feel like that would probably be more beneficial for a learning experience uh, and then once you've got through that learning experience whether you wanted to keep the clipper as part of your collection or you wanted to sell it on to someone to for them to enjoy uh, and then join something that fit more of what you liked uh, that might be an option the other thing as well is that with the clipper you could you could experiment with putting foams underneath the pcb and the plate and trying things for different sounds and you know seeing how different switches sound in the same board it gives you a really good reference point i think um so my vote would be for that purely to learn about how to build boards in the hobby and what you might like uh to, to give you kind of an understanding of what you're gonna like yeah uh, with that said i would say that uh, the the vega is the upcoming 65 percent polaris basically right Yes, yes. Okay, so I would say that the Vega will probably be a more premium typing experience. However, it'll also be more expensive. So, depending on how much you have to spend and how much you want to spend and maybe what your perceived value is, uh, you know, that one could be way better or worse than the other. So, I, I, I don't know. I, I think... For a first build, I, I would probably go with the Clippa just because it is cheaper. There is a little bit more versatility in, the, in maybe some of the options, and I, I think it'll probably give you a better idea of a, of a baseline of what a, a good mechanical keyboard can be, and then maybe move up to some of the, the more expensive higher-end stuff like the uh, like the Vega. Not that the Vega is going to be expensive because the Polaris was pretty reasonably priced, but the Polaris yeah. was definitely more expensive than, um, than the Clippa, so I'd assume the Vega would be as well. <laughs> Showed off the Polaris again. Um, yeah, agree. Okay, cool. Yeah. Not like I'm trying to be mean or anything. The, the, the Clippa is really, really great value, especially in the kit, because your choice of plate and that PCB just makes that kit at a great value. But, I mean, the Clippa as a normal case is not going to be as interesting 
admittedly, as something like the Vega, which is going to be, you know, uh, a much a much more insane, intense product, basically. But I, I really think knowing the budget is is kind of kind of crucial if we're going to make recommendations like that. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Because I mean, to, to, you got to think about how this community looks to new people when they're first coming in. When people are like, "You spend a hundred and fifty dollars on a GMK key set? Are you stupid?" Yeah, well, you what spend, kind of you moron? Three hundred, yeah. three hundred dollars on a board. You joined a four hundred dollar group by? Are you mad? What kind of stupid? You a thousand dollar Kepler? <laughs> what on earth is this? Yeah, yeah, like that. That's how a lot of people view the community. And of course, to us, we're like, like a hundred and fifty dollar GMK set. It's like whatever. Three hundred dollar yeah, board. Three hundred dollar board is like right? budget category for us. So it's like, you yeah. know, it really your perception kind of changes a lot of this too. But Clippa, it it's Clippa is available right now. Um, it'll probably get to you sooner. It has lots of options, and the value is there. And you're buying from Mechanisk, which is a fantastic source. So, and there's a polycarbonate version for ten dollars cheaper. Yeah, what's not to like? Which is in my basket right now. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Anyways, let's uh, let's move on as well. Um, Wilson one one five five asking top three Grail board in your collection. Oh, jeez. Well, my collection is oh, nowhere man. near Jay's, so mine's going to be kind of boring. Um, <laughs> I, I don't even know where to start. I don't know if any of my boards are what I'd call grail boards, but then again, that's another term that's kind of... It's kind of different based on who you're talking to and who's saying it. Uh, bro, if I had to pick three boards that, and all the others were just going to leave me for whatever reason, I'd probably pick... Uh, the, uh, See, this is really hard because I'm just going to pick my boards. That's the thing. I'm going to pick the JO1 and the JO2 for a start off. Those two boards are my boards that designed for my kind of use case and whether other people like them or not, that was up to them. Um, so I'd probably pick those two for a start off. And then in, in terms of all the other boards, again, it's going to be one of those things that changes on a daily basis. If you ask me right now, I'm really, really loving the JNCE that I built uh, a couple of weeks ago. If you asked me two weeks ago, I would have probably said the Steel IDB60 because it's just stupid. Um, and then if you'd have asked me six months to 12 months ago, I might have even said the VA. I just don't know. And I'd hope to never have to pick that third one. But um, it, it's different all the time. Yeah. I feel, I feel like I would just be disrespecting a lot of people if I answered that question. So I'm not going to answer that question. Um, because it, it, it's kind of, yeah, I, I, it would change for me as well. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the, the the more I think about the boards that I've got, the harder it is to answer. Like the Satisfaction seventy five prototype that I've got, I love that board. I don't use it anywhere near often enough. The yeah. the, the polycarbonate canoe I've got, that's a really nice board. Um, I'm not particularly fan of the the key setup on it, laser, but you know, I like the board itself. Then I've got a couple of clippers, and I've got SKBs, and I've got you know all these other boards. My Exent that I color matched to my Datsun, you know, it, <laughs> yeah. there's just so much out. It's it's so difficult. To so make many choice. variables, and, and Grail is always going to differ from person to person. So it it Grail differs for me from week to week. <laughs> I can have a different view now of what I do next week. Yeah. You know, like it's it's yeah. a good question. It's structured badly for people like Jay and myself that don't usually view the community that kind of way or think about that sort of thing. So yeah. <clears throat> um. And Papaya asking, what is your favorite flashy, colorful sets? Everyone can love a white on black. Uh, what's a weird one you inexplicably love? A weird one that we inexplicably love. Um, GMK Skeletor. Skeletor? It's a good set. Yeah, I like that. Hmm. I mean, also, like, what, what constitutes as a flashy set? Because to me, a flashy set is, like, pretty much anything that involves three or more colors and isn't, like kind of to, to, noted as like a, a classic colorway basically to to to, to me it, it's anything that doesn't include uh black and white white on black anything that includes l9 or u9 um <laughs> and doesn't include some kind of warm gray like honeywell or muted anything that doesn't include those five colors and i'm using colors as a, 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 a quite descriptive of that but um if it doesn't include those five things it's flashy flashy huh uh, I, I, this is going to be, this is going to take people by surprise, because this is a, a set that I think most people don't like. Um, GMK Deep Space, I think, is, is highly underrated. Oh, no, I like it. Yeah, it's good. Um, the alphas on that are stunning. The, yeah. The, the gray and yeah. dark gray alphas, yeah. It's, 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 I think it's oddly good, but I, 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 I think most people dislike it. Um, 
flashy sets, man. DMG as well. DMG's good. D yeah, I. That would probably be the flashiest set I own, and it, that that one, open, that one that one. You're so silly, Jay. You're <laughs> so silly. All right, I'll, I'll set I'll, I'll settle on DMG because that set has a lot of um, a lot of value to me sentimentally. <clears throat> um, I didn't realize people considered DMG a flashy set though, but I guess I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm just going by the rules. I yeah, sure. You know, that, yeah. I had, that I set earlier on that have no yeah. basis for this question whatsoever. I just came up with some. This hobby, right there's too many variables in this hobby, man. It's so hard to answer some of these questions. Um, XQC spills coke asking uh, a non-keep question. What's your favorite Ooh, music? Um, all right, so I for me this is pretty easy. I view music a lot like I view keyboards and switches and keycaps and stuff. I I don't really care about what it is as long as it's good. So that's kind of the way I work. Uh, my music library on my PC, for example, like you name a genre, I probably have it on there. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like all, all forms of, you know, electronica, house, you know, rap, hip hop, country, Norwegian death metal, like you pick anything. And I probably listen to it more often than you think. Um, if it, you know, it doesn't. Yeah. It, any, anything from Marty Robbins to you know Taylor <laughs> Swift. I don't. I don't really care. Like I, as long as I enjoy the song, that's that's what that's what matters to me. I think that's fair. That's fair. I think for me, there's the, I listen to a lot of music, but a lot of it's kind of like unstructured in terms of what I choose to listen to. So one of the big things that I'll do is on the TV behind me when I'm working from home. I work here as well, where I'm sat right now. I will tend to have either a lo-fi channel or one of these coffee shop type jazz channels on in the background whilst I'm working away. Um, but then if I'm specifically listening to music, uh, I'll tend. To... <coughs> Excuse me. Bless me. Uh, that snuck up on me then. Um, I'll tend to listen to kind of like a lot of Foo Fighters, um, you know, uh, kind of uh, alternative rock, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a good band called The Answer who I really like. Um, you know, there's, <laughs> I, uh, love, there's a lot of... I love Twitch chat. <laughs> After you sneeze <laughs> you or cough, everyone just loses their mind. I love it. Oh no, oh no. Yeah, so it's... Good. It's, so it, it's probably yeah. it's probably dust. That's probably what it is. It, it's probably <laughs> I remember on the, on the on the on the the Saturday stream when we were talking about COVID. I like I had a sip of water. Or, I forgot what I was drinking at the time. I think it was water. I like I had a sip coughed, of water yeah. and like it kind of went down. Like a little bit of it went down the kind of the wrong tube there. And I and I coughed a little bit. And I was like, uh oh, <laughs> people are gonna think I'm sick now. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. Yeah. What's, but yeah, I, what's my temperature? I'm not hot. I'm comfortable. I'm fine. I'm not. I'm not yeah. sick. <laughs> Oh shit! I'm dying. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm not dying. I'm fine. I don't have any disease right now that I'm aware of, uh, apart from oh being, of course. Some of these so questions good. today are 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 really intense. Ten Strong asking, "What is the worst question each of you have gotten during a stream?" Worst question. That the hardest question to answer is, "What's your favorite X?" Because yes, the, absolutely. That, that that's just hard to answer. Um. You know, I think the easiest way of asking those questions is, "What would you recommend for this, or what would you recommend for that?" That that's kind of the easiest way to answer those questions, I think, and the better way to frame them. So, if you've got a board in mind and you want to say, "I've got this board in this colorway," what key set would you use with it? That's a better way to ask us about key sets and then engage about key sets, for example, or switches or whatever other kind of uh, thing you want to put in there. Um, asking which we like, it's like asking what's my favorite plate material. Uh, the, the the only answer I can give to that is anything non-metal, because the rest of it entirely depends on the board, the mount type, the switches, the plate, the, sorry, the PCB, the, the the board itself. It, you know, it, it all depends. So, I think the the hardest questions to answer are those that are really open-ended, that say, "What's your favorite X, Y, Z?" Uh, a better way to ask us those questions is to say, "I'm doing this. What would you guys recommend for this element of the build?" Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I, so I, I try to take the approach of like there are no dumb questions, only dumb you know answer kind of kind of thing. Um, and I, I gotta be honest, I, I don't think I've ever really gotten a question on a stream that I thought was like so far fetched that it seemed like wrong or bad or um, you know worst in this case. So I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I have a good answer for that. But I, I agree with Jay that any of these vague, like, what's your favorite or what's the best X is just about the hardest thing to answer for people like us. 
just because that's not how we look at these kind of products. That's not how we we operate in this community. Um, and with that said, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna talk about this the next question as well. So um, uh, I'll I'll. All rev relevant. Sorry, I cannot pronounce that. Apparently, um, if you had to recommend a switch to someone who is who only has limited experience with the mass market cherry blue gaming boards, but had become bored and wants to experiment experience something new, uh, what would you choose? Um, so th these are another questions I, I think are better questions for our Discord um, than the stream itself. Personally, because I feel like I can give you a way better answer if you ask me or PM me in, like, the Top Clack server, for example. Link below, of course. Um, like, if you ask me there, I can I can formulate and type out a way better response than something I can just spitball verbally um, off the top of my head, generally. Um, and just because, to answer a question like that, I would have to first ask you a series of questions to get your preferences... Uh, as well as some other things. So, you know, like, I, I think, like, the scenario, the environment, and all the variables that go into it are just as important, if not more so, than just being, like, um, get this switch because it's good. Because I feel like that would be disrespectful to you if I did something like that, because I, I'd like to know yeah. more about your personality and your typing preferences before I answer a question like that. And then if, think, we, if we do it on stream, then it kind of just becomes like this super long back and forth and it gets kind of convoluted with all Twitch chat. So I do think that, I, you know, if you ask in the Discord server, you're going to get way better answers for questions like that than on stream. I think the, the only other thing that I could add to that, because I completely agree with what Brian says, is but you could try to get hold of a Switch tester. Uh, Novel Keys and Kono both saw some really good examples if, yeah. if you're in the US. And you can try a ton of different Switches out in that before you start to look at a board. Um, but they're not necessarily representative of what it's going to feel like in a board, but it'll give you an idea of what the key feel is going to feel like. Um, so they're a good step in the right direction. But everything else, I completely agree with what Brian said. Um, asking the Discord and taking a range of answers from a range of different people and being able to really articulate your thought process around what you want the build to be what you want to experience what you like and dislike about the boards you've currently tried out uh, and other than that the only other thing to say is if there's a meetup that goes on nearby you yes. after the whole covid thing go try it out a meetup because you'll get to try hundreds of different boards there with different switches different lube styles different boards that it's always really really useful to try and narrow down what you like at a meetup because it means you don't have to buy everything you can try yeah. other people's stuff a meetup is, without a doubt, the best way to experience learning new things about keyboards. You will you will type on so many boards that make no sense to you, and you'll probably love some of them, hate some of them, and be neutral about others, and it'll just be a really amazing experience overall. I will say, though, uh, if you're going to your first meetup, a mistake I made, and this sounds really mean and stupid, but I spent most of my time just engaged in conversation with people. And while that's nice and, you know, that, that is a great experience as well, I felt that I really missed out on the opportunity to try, like, all the keyboards that were there as well. So I feel like try to balance your time. Talk, talking to people is great, but make sure you make the rounds around your meetup, whatever, wherever your, your locale is. And you, you, you go around the meetup and you try every single board you can. And if you're curious about anything, ask the owner of that board. And I'm sure they will be more than happy to inform you. So, meetups really, really amazing for learning new things in our community. Uh, Laugh Master with our next question, saying, "I'm very late tuning in this week, but how are y'all holding up with the virus situation? Uh, I've been stuck at home for two weeks, and I'm getting some cabin fever. Uh, I think I that's that. yeah, that's kind of a I think that's the general consensus at this point. I um, my place of employment was shut down temporarily, so I am currently out of work and I'm just chilling at home. I kind of like just chilling at home because it gives me more time to do things like talk clack and uh, you know you know hang out with my friends, play video games, and stuff like stuff like that. So uh, I I I like it, but it kind of sucks being out of work as well. So catch catch twenty two there, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I. I'm ex I, I want the world to stabilize again. I think uh, I think we can all agree on that. But I'm holding up better than a lot of others, not as well as some. <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing all right. Um, uh, so here in the UK, we're kind of in a semi-lockdown at the moment. Um, I'm spending most of my time at home, sat pretty much where I'm sat right now, uh, either working or doing keyboard stuff. Uh, so I've been working on a lot of stuff for Prototypist, uh, working on a lot of stuff with some of the other really, really good vendors and community members and things like that. Um, uh, 
spending a lot of time with the wife, which is nice because we don't usually get to spend too much time together as well. But both working from home, it's kind of fit as, um, uh, yeah, it, it, it's all right at the minute. Um, but uh, I'm sad that the UK meetup's not happening this weekend because I was really looking forward to that. Um, but now we've moved it to November instead. So hopefully things will be back to normal by November uh, and we'll be able to travel again. Sounds good. All right. Uh, you, re you ready for a lightning round Q&A, Jay? Yeah, let's let's do some lightning questions. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's do this. Joseph Rojas asking, uh, I built a tofu for my first board and, board and looking to upgrade. I want a bigger board and I'm looking at the Iron 180 and the Rama Jewels. What do you think would be more suitable for me? All right, so he, he built a tofu, 60% keyboard. Oh, actually, there's a 65% technically, but I'm assuming he's talking about the 60%. Let's assume it's a 60, yeah. We'll okay. assume it's the 60. Um, he's looking at either the Iron 180, which is a TKL, or the Rama Jewels, which is a 65%. Um, mm. Again, this is going to be a way better question for the Discord because I would need to ask you a series of questions to uh, know about... Uh, what you have used before, and some of the other things you're looking at. Because obviously, the Iron 180 is going to be a TKL, much bigger board, much bigger layout. Rama Jewels, much smaller board, much smaller layout. Uh, still gives you a lot of the functionality. So it really depends on what your use case and preferences are. Um, because I, 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 those boards are quite different. So they are, I, I, either different. either of them would give you a big upgrade over that uh, Tofu 60% though. <laughs> Okay, uh, we should do a hot take on this because I, I don't have anything to add to that. So I completely agree with everything okay. you said, Brian. That, uh, but we should do a hot take on it just to give him some some steer. Uh, so I am one eight your Rama Jewels. Oh gosh, uh, I prefer the aesthetic of the Iron One Eighty more, but I'd rather use a sixty five percent than a TKL just because I don't like using boards as large as a TKL. So I don't know if you're by, but. He might, he or she might be uh, way more comfortable using boards that size than me. So yeah, yeah. That, that's another reason why it's it's going to be hard for me to kind of give an answer here. If I had to pick between the two, I would pick the Iron One Eighty. Um, you know, I we spent some time talking to the uh, the Smith and Rune guys, and they're they're super nice guys. And nothing nothing against obviously Rama and um, uh, Zombiemon, but you know, I I don't know. Yep. I, I'd, I'd go for the Iron 80 as well, purely because I've got too many 65s, and uh, your circumstances might differ, so definitely chat in the Discord, but I'd go for the Iron 80 as well. Yeah, I, I like the Iron 180 more, but I, <laughs> I would get more use out of the jewels, honestly. I'd probably use the jewels more than the Iron 180, just because of the layout reasons. Yeah. Uh, just uh, quickly before we move on to the next question, uh, Cypher Sage does mention that they haven't been able to go out, uh, um, uh, to the UK meetup, but he's really sad. Um, uh if, if you can still go to the one in November, please don't refund your ticket. Your ticket will carry over. Uh, the venue hasn't refunded us or anything like that. So the mods that have paid for the venue, they, they would be out of pocket if you refunded. Uh, please try and sell your ticket on. Uh, but go and check out on the MK UK Discord if you need some more information on that. So just to pull that out quickly. Sure. All right. Uh, Wilson asking, uh, is it possible to mod the Fiel slash Clipper to support the rubber band mount like the Unicorn? Interesting question. Uh, I don't think I, so. I would assume not, just because it's not... I, the Unicorn was designed for something like that, whereas the Clippa and the Fiel are not. So uh, I, yeah. I, I would say no, but with that said, there are still things you can do. Uh, for example, the, the Mechanist Type X has... Um, let me see if I can pull it out here. Cause actually, this will be better to show on, uh, on camera, trust me. All right, so... Let's uh, well, let's get this foam out of here. Actually, it does come with some um, some foam as well. The Pipex, even though it's not live yet. So this is, as you can see, a tray mount, and it does instead of having uh, the six posts or having a removal post, this one actually only has the uh, the four uh, outside posts there. So he's actually included. These are um, I don't know exactly what material it is. It's probably rubber or something very similar. Um, Not these, rubber, yeah. the, these kind of uh, yeah, these rubber kind of standoffs that go over the metal standoffs, and they actually protrude out a bit higher as well. So basically, when you're mounting the plate, you mount it right on top of that, and you do get a little bit of extra cushion because of that. Tray mount has historically been probably the firmest typing experience that you can get because all of the all of the typing impact is going straight into the standoffs that are attached to the case. 
Whereas you look at something that's like a sandwich mount or a top mount, um, you know, usually directly under the PCB is all open and it's only mounted on the sides, for example. So um, these are just the little things that Mechanist has been really trying to uh, put forward to make tray mounts a much more premium experience because a lot of people in the community think that tray mount is very much inferior just because of the typing experience and some of the experiences that they've had in the past, which I can sort of understand, but uh, I think um, removing those middle posts as well as adding some kind of cushioning to these uh, mounting points actually works pretty well. I remember when I had your T60, for example, Jay, um, I put some I put some o some tiny O rings over each standoff, and uh, mm -hmm. between that and not having the two middle mount points, that board was so flexy and the typing experience was very soft. So I, I think that tray mount shouldn't necessarily be overlooked just because it's tray mount. And uh, I do think that there are still a lot of things that it can offer, and I like a lot of things that Mechanisk is doing, and that's just that just goes to show you. Cool. Um, but yeah, no, I think as far as that particular rubber band unicorn style mount, I don't think that's going to be possible on either of those boards. Uh, yeah, so so the unicorn has standoffs that the rubber O ring mounts onto. Uh, whilst there is some standoffs around the edges of the the, the clipper case, I don't think it would work for it. Um, yeah, you, you'd probably need something else to prop it prop it up. So yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, uh, Jack Static asking uh, if you could integrate something representative of another of your hobbies into your keyboard, what mm. would it be? Wow, that's an interesting question. So my my other big hobby, the one that I spend way more money on than on keyboards, is cars. So I think I've got seven cars right now. Um, I I love cars. I love working on them. I love driving them. Um, I love doing track days. I enjoy getting greasy and dirty and getting underneath the car and doing bits of work. Even just simple things like oil changes and. Uh, things like that. I just, yeah, I, I really enjoy that, especially in the warmer months. So um, I would have to do something with cars. There is a reason why my exempt behind me is bright orange, because that matches my favorite car, my Datsun. Uh, and there's a reason that the Lodestone is in bright orange as well. That's because Flex and I wanted to match that color even better than the uh, the exempt does. So, um, you know, that that's kind of me trying to bring that experience in. So the Lodestone colors actually, uh, actually really replicate my car. So I've got kind of like a, a space gray set of uh, wheels on the Datsun with the, uh, um, the 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 bright orange car and then the the rear spoiler and uh, the front uh, the front uh, valance they're also black plastic which is why we use the carbon fiber as well for it so it kind of gave the whole thing uh, so we have the gray base on the lodestone with the orange top and the carbon fiber plate and that was just our kind of way of trying to colorize uh, it to, to, to suit me a little bit more so I've already tried it a few times uh, but yeah anything to do with cars bring in is kind of like my thing Nice. Uh, I mean, my keyboards are without a doubt, like my main hobby. I don't really spend a whole lot of money on anything else. Um, I, I guess I'm kind of into PCs, but I haven't really like built or altered a PC of mine in, in years. Um, I'm into gaming, but like gaming and keyboards kind of already have a ton of crossover. Uh, I'm also really into anime. Anime also has a lot of crossover with key sets lately. Uh, I know a lot of people on that weeb, uh, that weeb GMK set train, for example. So, I mean, I already see a lot of crossover. I guess the only other hobby I would even remotely consider a hobby of mine would be um, whiskey. And I got to be honest, I don't know how I'd incorporate whiskey into keyboards. At one point in Top Facts Lifecycle, I was really considering doing a, a kind of a meme review series called Whiskeys and Sixties, where I compare and contrast 60% <laughs> and whiskeys on each episode, and I talk about what whiskey you should be enjoying with which 60% keyboard, which hey, obviously is super dumb, but like the whole point was that it would be, not, it'd be, it'd it's be not. funny, is the whole point. Mel Melin, Melin does porting with ports, you can do 60 I, with... Yeah, he stole that from me, man, come on. Unfair, feels bad. Just kidding, <laughs> I love you, I love you, Merlin. But, uh... Yeah, I, I, I've always kind of wanted to do that, but that, you know, that involves, like, kind of a produced YouTube video kind of feel, and I just, I don't have, like, the area or setup to do that yet. Um, I should, once I move to uh, my next place, I'm going to have a lot more open area just for things like recording, taking pictures, and stuff like that. I have, like, literally dedicated space for that in my next place, so I'm nice. pretty I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's a whole lot more I can integrate into keyboards with uh, my other hobbies. 
Cool. Uh, see, Madrid doesn't tag us, but he's, he does come up with a really interesting question, non-keyboard related. He said, who was your favourite ex? I assume he means ex-partner, which is kind of a really difficult one That's... to answer. I don't know if your girlfriend watches this show, Brian, uh, or I... if you're going to shy away from answering well, this one. Well, th- thankfully for me, my girlfriend is super cool, and she would find this hilarious and interesting. <laughs> um, if, if, if I answered this, so I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like that's kind of a weird question to answer on stream, though. It, it is, but hey, uh, I'll give it a go. So my favorite ex is my ex girlfriend because she's now my wife. So there we go. Oh. Well, uh, that's cheating, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> are you kidding hey, me? It, uh, let me ask, answer me this: Is she still my girlfriend? No, she's my wife. Therefore, she's my ex girlfriend. That's dumb. Okay, I'm gonna have big balls here. Uh, my my favorite ex girlfriend um, would probably have to be uh, this girl I dated named Ashley. Um, her and I didn't really share a whole lot of like common interests per se, but we got along super duper well, and she was always really nice and really caring, and I appreciated that. Um, with that said, my current girlfriend, I you know, her and I have been together for a few years now, and I don't think. I could have better compatibility with someone in literally every single area of my life. So uh, sure. I'm I'm super happy right now. But I mean, I've had some good exes too. I mean, I'm still friends with the majority of my exes, to be honest with you. And, you know, most of them are, are, just, are have been great people and are doing fine in life. So I don't really have a whole lot of bad things to say about my exes. Yeah, most of my exes I'm, I'm fine with. Um, uh, Except for a couple of... <laughs> my first serious relationship, she was the same. So I had I had to, I had a nope out of that one. That was pretty bad. But uh, Fair enough. aside from one kind of ugly situation, it's been quite quite good. Yeah, I've had I've had up and down relationships in the past. Some have been great. Some have been not so great. Some were great at the time, and then looking back on them, well, you realize that they weren't great. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, you know. All right, we need a lightning round. The last few questions because we are already uh, well over the three hour mark, and uh, we need to stop doing that. So <laughs> let's we uh, do, yeah. We need it, yeah. But uh, we had a lot more viewers than normal today. Um, just I assume because of the uh, both the raid from Plume as well as the uh, shout out from the Mechanist Discord. So uh, it it could be worse. Anyways, let's uh, let's answer a few more questions before we head out for the night. The Pokemon Kid is asking, what has been your favorite innovation since you started in keyboards? Ooh. That's crazy. I want to say Isolation Mount, definitely one of my favorite. But at the same time. Like gasket mounting was a thing back in the OTD days too, technically. Yeah, so. I wouldn't. I wouldn't technically call that innovation. Um, uh, although it has merit, I think that that's not a bad answer for this question. I think uh, it's definitely where my mind first went to. Um, I, I'm going to say the influx of new plate materials is my biggest thing. So when when we when I first joined the community, everything was about brass plates. You know that seemed to be the hot thing. People were trying to go from aluminium and steel to brass. Uh, and that was the done thing. I'm vastly preferring the fact that we're tending to move away to a lot of uh, polycarbonates, palms, uh, carbon fibers, all of these kind of other materials or plates, anything non-metal, basically. That's probably my favorite thing. All right. Um, I completely agree with you, and that would probably be my answer, too, if you didn't say it. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go something different here. So, I'm going to throw a curveball, even. Hot swap. Um, I know Hot Swap isn't everyone's favorite, but I do think it is one of the better innovations that has happened in the community since I've been around. Just because it does such a good job of getting new people into the hobby, as well as giving the enthusiasts um, a potential platform to test a lot of switches a lot easier. So, I don't know. I think that's pretty good. That's what I'm going with. Because I really have to pee and we really have to end the stream. So <laughs> I'm like dancing in my chair over here, trying like not to go to the bathroom on stream again. Um... Wilson1155 asking, have you tried Zykos combination from Chewy? I have heard so much about Zykos, but I have not actually tried them yet. Uh, I've got two built that I have that I've tried outside of a keyboard. They feel good. Haven't put them in a keyboard yet. I need to do that. I need to make more and put them in a keyboard. But expensive, man. It's not cheap to do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's a very, very expensive combination. Um, Bearded Nut Inc. asking, which scotch then? So I used to be, I, I do still drink whiskeys. I just drink a lot less than I used to these days. But uh, I used to really like scotch. Um, I have since kind of moved more towards the American whiskeys. I, I much prefer ryes and bourbons and uh, other regional American whiskeys lately. So um, 
I, I don't know. I, I don't really drink much scotch anymore. I don't even know what my favorite scotch is, to be honest with you. But some of my favorite American whiskeys are uh, Swift, um, Lazy River. Swift is out of Texas. Lazy River, I think, is out of Oregon. Um, and then there's another one from... Uh... Oh, God, crap. Crap, the state. There's another one I like a lot. Hit me up on Discord, and I'll, I'll talk about whiskeys forever. Um, yeah, if I had to pick anything, I'd pick a, uh, a single distillery, Brooklady. Uh, they're my favourite. I they, oh, there's some. They do some really, really, really good things. Uh, um, it's it's the base in. Uh, All right, like, Jay. I'm going. I'm going to pee. I don't care. Finish oh, answering the question. Thanks. <laughs> gee, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so I'd, I'd go for Brooklady. Um, yeah, just some really, really, really good whiskeys there. Um, Pokemon Kid as well is also a, a big fan of a good whiskey as well. So he'll have some things to talk about. Um, but yeah, uh, Optimal. Go for that. Really nice. Uh, let's see what the next question is then whilst waiting for Brian to come back. Um, Tenstrong says, thanks for the stream. We've not finished quite yet. Uh, Oni Grundy, though, uh, subscribed for 17 months, currently on a one-month streak. Thank you very much, Oni. Uh, good to see you here. Uh, and glad that you are watching. So thank you very much, Grant, sir. Um, and 100 bits from a Bearded Nutting as well. Thank you very much, dude. Really, really appreciate us. Apologies if we've missed any of your subscriptions or uh, other bits or anything like that during the stream. We do try and keep up with it, but we do miss stuff during the news. So thank you to anyone who donated during that part of the show. Um, Jack Static's answer, Huey, I think was that in relation to the X. That's a good good answer. I like that. Um, uh, we should ask Brian about that now he's returned. When you gotta go, you gotta go. I'm sorry, guys. Hopefully you guys it's, as it, humans understand. It's fine. Uh, Jack Static was suggesting that Huey might have been your favorite X, the uh, the previous Top Back host. <laughs> really? <laughs> Huey over Bector? Did you guys remember Bector? Come on. <laughs> that guy is quite something. I do like Huey a lot, though. I think I think if if I if I were gay, I think I I I would very easily date Huey. Really? I, I guess Huey would have to be gay in this scenario as well because I, I I do believe he is straight. So uh, I yeah he, Huey Huey's kind of my type honestly. If I were gay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I spend a lot of time thinking about things. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Odie Grundy for the uh, the Twitch Prime sub for 17 months. Thank you, sir. Uh, already done that. Already done it, man. Oh. Already had. Already did beat in the inks hundred bits as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I got a shout out to I got a shout out too because uh, Grundy has uh, always been a very close friend of mine, and I've known him way before I got into keyboards. Him and I played competitive uh, games together, so. Always, always nice to uh, see friendships carry over into another hobby or something, you know? It's always good stuff. Uh, Ten Star asking again, when did you go to the bathroom on stream before? I've, I've gotten up to use the restroom a handful of times on stream. Two, 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 three weeks ago, yeah. Two or three weeks, yeah, two or three weeks ago. Um, I've probably done it a grand total of like four or five, maybe six times on stream. Um, sometimes you just gotta go to the bathroom, and sometimes we stream for a long time, and I mean... If you guys know me, I I intake an insane amount of water. Like, I don't know how big this cup is, actually. This is probably, like, at least a 48-ounce cup. And I drink upwards of 10 of these a day. So, I go through water like crazy. <laughs> so, I pee a lot. Yeah. It's just the Dur way it is. During, during the day, I, I probably go through quite a lot as well. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I probably drink somewhere in the region of around 4 liters, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Hydro homies, man. Shout out to r slash hydro homies. <laughs> also, shout out to Bearded Nut Inc. with the 100 bits. Thank you so much, man. And uh, I believe that is that is a good time to wrap it up. Oh, we'll answer this one last question here. Keyboard Krill asking, Kale or Mil Max hot swap sockets? I prefer the Kale myself. What about you, Jay? Uh, What's your preferred yeah, the kale hot swap? Ones. I, I don't really like hot swap I, at all, I know, but I know. if I had to pick, I'd go for the KL ones over the Milmax ones. The Milmax ones are just really funky to, to fit, so... Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of the Milmax ones either, or pretty much anything that's, like, a hole tight, effectively. Remember when hole tights were really popular before the KL hot swaps? Oh, gosh, um, yeah, and before Milmax as well, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I just wasn't really a fan of those. Um, yeah, KL hot swap sockets are not perfect either. They have several issues, but in terms of a hot swap solution, I would vastly prefer Kale over any of the alternatives, I think. I don't think there's anything better than Kale in the market at the moment. Alright. 
Well, with that, I think that is a good time to end the show. If you'd like to continue asking questions, uh, you know where to find us. Look below the stream. You can find the link to our official Discord server. Uh, you can. My PMs are open all all day, every day. So if you got a question for me, you can always feel free to ask. We got lots of channels there. Something for every everyone. Whether you want to talk about, uh, you know, your your sick Doom Eternal kills or all your new Animal Crossing exploits, or you want to talk about the omelet you made this morning or what group I you like. There's something for everyone there. So just join the server. Come hang out. It's a good time. Uh, you can also find the link to our YouTube channel link below. All the VODs get posted there 24 hours after they are streamed because of Twitch's terms of service. So you can catch all the <laughs> VODs and typing tests and other content there as well. And uh, yeah, any closing thoughts, Jay? Uh, no, other than uh, I'll be doing a build stream to finish off my Nixie clock in the next couple of days. I don't know when yet. Uh, it might be Friday or Saturday. I, I don't know. It'd just be whenever I can fit it in to do that. But I will have the Polaris build stream on Sunday, so I'll be building that on, on Sunday. I'm really looking forward to doing that. I need to uh, think up some switches and, and loop those up ready for it, but uh, I'll be building that on Sunday. Next week, I'm going to be building some Lego on stream as well, just to try and give you guys some more content. I actually have the new Batmobile Lego model, uh, which is actually the 1989 version of the Batmobile from uh, the Michael Keaton, uh, the best Batman, uh, IMO. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't at me. Um, <laughs> you're such a boomer just kidding so so yeah well yeah it, it's kidding. the one I agree with so I'm, I'm going to be building that on, on stream as well just to give you guys some more content we're still looking into when we're going to do our movie night so we're going to watch uh, a movie together on over discord we're still going to look into that and try and work out how best to do it I have been looking at the technology we can do to do it we're going to be watching The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou um, and we'll arrange that so please watch out on our discord for more announcements on that in the next couple of days but it's going to be one day next week maybe Monday Monday night I'm going to arrange it for so it'll be early hours of Tuesday morning for me but Monday night for most of you in the US so that's possibly what I'm going to do that for awesome sounds good to me um, also tomorrow the first episode of behind the keyboard it is confirmed it is scheduled if it doesn't happen it's not my fault I swear so uh, look forward to that that's going to be tomorrow at 5 p.m. pacific time so uh, it's, it's, it's an hour before the time that Top Clack normally starts, if you're unfamiliar with that. But yes, 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Be there and be square. Uh, it should be a good time. I have a, a, a pretty fantastic guest, honestly. I think a lot of you guys will be pretty happy with who it is. So it's going uh, to be pretty awesome. It's going to be a great time. And uh, I, depending on what happens on Saturday, I might have a build stream on Saturday, too. So I have lots of build streams coming up and uh, other content as well. Now that I'm, you know quarantined so <laughs> just like every other streamer nowadays I, I feel like everyone's just doing more content which is cool which is cool to see as well so yeah, yeah. absolutely people asking for the leak uh we asked i asked brian earlier on he said he wasn't going to leak or even give any hints so yeah. uh, I'm I've, afraid I've, I can't, I've only I can't i've only told you i think i think you're the only other person that knows so I, oh I, really I, I think so yeah i don't think i've told anyone else so uh, I, I, the thing, the thing is, I can't think of a hint that I could give that wouldn't exactly. give away instantly. So. Exactly. So I, I'm not. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. You're going to have to tune in tomorrow to watch because that's just the villain I am. I want more viewers. So bam, there you go. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the stream as much as we enjoyed doing it, and hopefully we'll catch you next time. Make sure you tune in tomorrow, and then again on uh, Sunday, and then again uh, every day that we're doing streams. <laughs> yeah, whenever we're doing stuff, right? Yeah. Just Every... keep an eye on the Discord. Yes, yeah. yes. Keep an eye on the Discord announcement channels if you want to know about more content. Everything always gets posted there beforehand. So that's where you'll find it. Absolutely. All cool. right, guys. We love you. Hopefully, you have a great rest of your day or night, depending on where you are. And uh, stay safe. Wash your hands a lot, too. Yeah. And stay at home. Yeah. And don't pee on stream, man. No, what? Come on. What kind of professional are you? Come on, Jay. Yeah. Oh. What? Oh, I've, what? I've never. I'll just roll the outro. I don't know what you're talking about.